Arsenal starting. Party time. <laughs> I'm glad someone looks at it that, that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I'm not sure if we're waiting for maybe one other person. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Parlor is hacked. Oh, my God. Holy shit, we gotta look into that afterwards. Remember, we always do stuff after the panel, so. Um, oh, so par you, someone said Parlor got hacked? Yeah, apparently Parlor got hacked, yep. Uh, mute your, uh, uh where by? You, yeah, there yeah you go. sorry yeah. about that. Parlor got hacked. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, apologies about that. I was just on a show where we didn't use, where we where we did use whereby. So sorry, apologies about that, about bleeding over audio. Okay. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun. I'm I'm curious as to what they actually did. Like, who um, like, did they steal data, or you know, like, what actually happened there? Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm still just hearing about it right now. Yeah. Looks like it's trending on Twitter right now. I'll go dig into it, see what we can find out. Hmm. Oh my god, apparently Parler requires social security numbers? No, there's no way they do that. Yeah, I've heard that. No, I heard that before. Yeah, I did. Someone told me that. You, you gotta get your social security number. What the? Ah, oh hilarious. my god. <laughs> oh my god. Hilarious. Holy, if that's true, oh, holy shit. I've heard that. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I don't know for sure. I've never signed up for it, obviously, but. <laughs> oh man. All right. Um. So we're waiting on uh one other person, but uh, they said they'll be late. Um. So we'll, we can get started without them. Oh shit. <laughs> All right. All right. When they'll be. Bring this up. Bring this up. Great, it's great, just great. open. It's just open. Oh my fucking god. All right. Uh, thank you for being here, everyone. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is, once again, uh, Amazon, Amazon will be ringing. Uh, sorry. Ugh, I can't talk today. I, like, screwed this up, like, when I started the stream. Let's try it again. Uh, thank you for being here, everyone. Uh, uh, we're having our Amazon Lily roundtable uh, today. Um, and uh, we got a good group of guests, a nice group of hosts. Here yeah, once again. Um, so uh, I'll uh, start with um, uh, Demon Mama, actually. Yeah, it's Demon Mama. Thanks for being here, friend. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm always happy to be on your show. Um, yeah, my name's Demon Mama. Um, I stream on uh, my own website, demonmama.com, M A M A, uh, demonmama.com forward slash live. You can come hang out. Um, been growing really, really uh, a lot lately, so the community's been poppin um come hang out with us we talk about uh politics all the time i do debates um and then i also do just general curiosity education about history and biology all kinds of random topics we just watched a mini documentary about the incredible intelligence of um octopus octopuses and it was absolutely fascinating um and if that sounds weird well just go watch the vod and you'll see why it was so awesome it was absolutely incredible. But we do all kinds of stuff like that. A lot of politics, a lot of debates. Would love to have you. Thanks so much for having me on, Prime. Yeah, I can't go wrong with Demon Mama. Uh, you put on really good content. Um, did you watch that show on Netflix that was like My Teacher Octopus or something? No, but I really want to. I've heard that's amazing. You should. Uh, next, uh, Denim's. Denim's coming back uh, for second time on this panel, I think. The first Third time. time. First time on this one? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. All right. Time has no meaning to me. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> thank you for being around, though. Really appreciate you, uh, Denims. Um, yeah. How are you today? Pretty good. Thank you for having me. Um, should I be doing my intro? Well, if you want. No, well, you know, do whatever. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, sure. I'm Denims. I stream politics, react, and eat stuff on Twitch. I stream every single day uh, at 6 a.m. PST. Except tomorrow because I have an exam tomorrow, so I'm not streaming tomorrow. But otherwise, I stream every single day. Mm. Uh, yeah, and you've been uh, exploding in your channel um, over there. All right. Yeah, it's been. A lot you of uh, fun. you had been previously streaming, and then you came back to it, right? 
Yeah, I took, um, I was stream. I started That's streaming denims. politics in like yep. early 2019. Um, and then I went through like two different moves and I just took and a break and I was like, okay, I can't stream from my current place. I can't stream at the times or the lengths that I want to. So I took a break from streaming and now that I am in my own Hopefully place, I can work yes, my own Yes, you did, Miles Lux. It just started. So I've been back at streaming Perfect since timing. the beginning of the month. Okay. All right. Um, as fuck. Uh, next we have uh, Tumble Jire Maya. How are hey, you Pink today? One, good to see you. Sorry if I missed I'm you in good, chat before. thank you. Um, is my mic okay? Because I accidentally pulled every single plug out of the socket earlier, and it took me like an hour to plug back in my keyboard. I'm really tech literate. Uh, um, it sounds fantastic. Really good, actually. I'm not thank sure you. about Pink I, I'm good, thank you. Forgot what I was saying, yeah. Yeah. That's fair You enough. bought your channel, maybe. I like, I like denims a lot, most of the time. Uh, good place to start, yeah. Um... Uh, I stream mainly topics. politics, almost solely politics. Um, I don't have a schedule, sorry. Normally it's like 1pm GMT, which is like now-ish. No, it is now. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we're happy uh, that you uh, took time out of your day to uh, come join us. Uh, next, hi Priestess. Hi Priestess, thanks for being here. Thanks for coming through once again. Um, joined us on the uh, All Black panel. We had a really good time uh, last week, actually. It was really, really fun. I'm really glad you were there. Well, I'm glad you called it a good time. Um, I had a great time as well. <laughs> I had a great time, but I'm just I'm glad you called it a good time to assuage my all the time anxiety. Um, I'm the high priest. <laughs> I'm the high priestess. Um, I'm here. I'm anxious as always. I'm ready to yell and give my never zero IQ bored, tapes. Ever. Um, on my channel, I pretty much do whatever I'm feeling like that night. I play a lot of video games. I watch a lot of videos. I'm a spicy I bitch. yell about a lot of nonsense. And yeah, that's that's pretty much who I am. So thanks for inviting me back again. I love being here. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you keep coming. We'll definitely keep inviting you. And we always have a great time with you. So we're really happy to have you here. Now. Uh, we have our illustrious host, uh, City Cat. Thank you for being here once again. Um, uh, always nice to see you um, in your uh, was it virginal white uh, dress here, gown here. What's this? This is, oh, this is no, nice. It's just a crop top. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, it looks definitely fantastic. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's uh, it's great to Aww, see you. Oh, thank you so um, much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, so you're sticking with that. All right, it's cool. No, I mean, I love it. I'll, sure. Um, <laughs> City Cat, tell us about yourself. Um, well, according to my schedule and about how many times I stream, I don't fucking stream. Um, I try to stream. I stream when I can and when I want to. And it turns out that that is not very often. <laughs> um, especially yeah, with... Cool. Um, my study being quite heavy right now. I've got like two big assignments due um, Thank soon. You, and then every time I try to do anything else, I just feel guilty. Oh, I know. I got it. So it's not necessarily well. that I'm spending time doing the assignments. It's that I feel like I can't Tech let w, myself no, do anything that I actually enjoy doing because that would be time spending on something that I should like, I should be doing my assignment now. So I can't, I can't I'm just not having any fun. Um, but I love being here, and I have lots to say about the topics today, and one of them was one that I wrote, um, and I'm really excited to see what everyone says. Well, guess what? You can do your assignments while you watch. There you go. Okay. Yeah? All right. That's, that's, we're moving on. We're moving on. We're getting over it. We're moving on. Um, <laughs> and because my heart is beating nonstop in my chest. All right. Thunderous. Because once again, after maybe two months of me missing her, of me <laughs> hoping that I would see her one more time, just one more time before I left uh, this mortal realm, there she is. One of the best people. You have Trick Switch. Trick Switch, thank you for being here, for coming back, for coming Hello? back to me. For being back in my life. Hey, how are you doing? Hello. Uh, I'm good. I was MIA because I had the amount of assessment I had was insane. But now finals are over, so I'm back into it. 
<laughs> I'm so happy to see you. Uh, I missed you so I much. I have a haircut now. Yeah, hooray. Hello. Uh, kind of uh, matches with uh, City Cats. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Anyway. Uh, that's um, yeah. the excitement Your level. Your cat is coming in the mail today, Trick. No! I cannot wait to cat go by you. No. They were supposed to arrive incredible. yesterday. But I'm so no. Yes, I know, but this is Australia Post we're talking yeah. about, so oh. they're coming today. Wow. Oh, Prime will have a cat girl either side of him, just no. hitting him with a stick. Bunch of cat girls and a demon girl. <laughs> she's I'm innocent, so she's pure. Why did you corrupt her this way? No. All right. Uh. All right, well, anyway. All right, here we go. Uh, uh, tricks. Um, Oh, yeah, tricks. Would you like to you uh, a you read to. a topic? Uh, ye. Well, it's the first one's cat's topic. So, yeah, but, I, but I miss your cat. I miss do your, you want to read? But I miss your voice. Miss cat your voice. knows more about it I than me. I miss your voice. <laughs> oh, fine. Cat. And she has the same accent. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. We got a little raid. Thanks for the raid. Um, Raid's Z pod. Zanzi? Have you read me before? I don't know. But anyway, thank you for the raid. Really appreciate it. Go ahead. Zanzi. Okay. Um, so this is my topic, and um, I have lots to say. I mean, um, lots. So I will go last, as I usually do in the opening stuff, but I will talk for ages, and I would like to preemptively apologize. So, um, like two days ago on Twitter, Animal Crossing was uh, trending because night, a Jane girl a posted a photo of herself, like an in-game uh, picture um, of her character, and the the um she she the caption was like space buns, and she's a, a white girl and it was Don't blonde worry. hair. It's gonna be good. But um she got heaps of backlash saying that the style was actually Afro puffs, um a classically African American hairstyle. And um, people were calling her racist. People were saying that this is um, insane and this is cultural appropriation. And it reminded me personally of the exact same thing that happened um, when Animal Crossing came out. A person made their character have dark skin, even though they in real life didn't have dark skin. And people were saying it was the same as doing blackface. So I'm going to post the image in chat. Oh, no, someone already did. Thanks, Prime. Um, do we think that this outrage is justified or deserved? Um, is the is the image even mimicking African American hairstyles? Should fictional white characters uh, ever have their hair arranged in a, in a fashion similar to those found in other cultures, etc., etc., etc.? And we will go to uh, Demon Mama. I'll come back to you, Trix. Uh, sure. Um, yeah. So on this topic, um. My perspective is generally that um, while I do believe um, very strongly that like culture is a a very liquid um, thing that that people come up with ideas, uh, humans come up with incredible ideas, and these things are often um, replicated elsewhere, sometimes completely independently uh, at different times in history. Um, that we share culture, and that's one of the biggest strengths of humanity that we we are able to share things and come up with um, with uh, ideas that catch on across many, um, you know, across national boundaries, across any sort of boundaries that we would draw between us. Um, I do think that there's a consistent problem with um, companies, especially, um, and and very conservative companies such as Nintendo, um, erasing um, important uh, history and and sort of directly lifting um, a style or whatever, um, and saying, okay, we're going to rename this so that it's like consumer friendly or something along those lines which i i would argue that is that's actually the opposite of doing that and it is actually you know erasure of of the, the history of certain styles and of course i don't think that like um there's there's any real style that anyone can claim ownership over i don't think that's how culture works i don't think uh, people own culture and i don't think that's the case in uh, in any um with, with any form of culture I, I do think that it's important to pay attention to um the history and um, the cultural importance of, of certain aspects of, of culture. Sorry, that was culture a lot in a sentence. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't I don't know that um, I, I don't know a whole lot about the the specific reaction to this one image. 
um, what it sounds like to me uh, on a surface analysis is that this person didn't know what the name was and that uh, of the of the style was, and that Nintendo had chosen a name that was er erasive. That I don't think that that people oh, should. Oh, Nintendo! Do. Nintendo didn't choose the name. They don't name their hairstyles oh, in okay. the game. Okay, that's so fine. So she just then. she just put it on and uh, said that it was space buns. Yeah, I mean, I don't really. Uh, again, I don't like. Uh, I don't know what where what sort of fault can be uh, assigned to someone. I gen gen gender I, I generally tend to think that um that we should be like careful to individuals and and ruthless with systems. Um, but uh in this case, it sounds like perhaps there was just a lot of discourse around it. And I have thoughts about Twitter discourse, but that's independent of this. So that's my general thoughts on the topic. Cool. Uh, denims. Okay, so I have some mixed opinions about this topic because um, I did a little bit of research and I actually, obviously it was pretty surface level, but I couldn't actually find the origins of space buns. Um, I found some Mexican origins of space buns. I found some Native American origins of space buns. I also found some Japanese ones. So this seems to be something that exists in a lot of different cultures. Um, Maybe someone can give me like a source that like um, better proves a point that it's existed longer in like the black community or something, which I'd be happy to listen to. But uh, I think I'm not sure I see That's true, a significant problem with someone saying that like this hairstyle is cute and they happen to use the word space buns to describe it. Okay, cool. Uh, um, uh, Denims, your uh, camera's freezing. Uh, maybe I'll drop out of the way by, come back in. Sure. Uh, it's like this. Maya, you can go. Maya? Sorry, I always forget which keybind, and I use the same one every time. Um, I... I'm still... My brain is still computing on this one. Um, it's like this. I... I think... If I was to be upset, or kind of... If I was to, to kind of dislike something um about the hairstyles of animal crossing it would be more that um they didn't they have to do an update to have like the the space buns or the afro puffs or that hairstyle that we're talking about and then the other ones to like with black hair or like natural hair. yeah so that that was the most recent update that came out like a week ago and it was this hairstyle and a bunch of other traditionally like um it's like kinky hair that um with those hairstyles. Yeah, um there is like mad connection issues. Um I think that uh, I still don't know. I'm still really trying to figure it out, but I I don't know if I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm leaving it at that. It's a cool. tough question. Um, Tony. Don't worry. We'll get there. I, I, I also am sitting on the fence with this hairstyle thing. I think when it comes to race and culture, um, there are really far more pertinent issues than hairstyles and Animal Crossing. Yeah, I do. But agree. I also think that I'm, I'm, I'm not the biggest like proponent of like cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation is what the hill that that this black girl dies on, unfortunately. So I might not have like the traditional, like, um, like stand on my soapbox kind of expression of this. But I, I don't know. I don't. For one thing, I mean, curly hair is not exclusive to black people. So I, if that happens to be how your hair presents and you can put your hair like that, then I don't. I don't think it should be exclusive to only white characters. That was a specific question. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, but I do think that there is this like washing of black culture where we're, we're excited about space puffs instead of Afro puffs, which is just one slight change, which literally describes the, it, it, the entire thing. I understand it, it probably wasn't, um, you know, I don't think it was someone's attempt to whitewash black culture. So I, I, I'm not angry about it. And Twitter tends to be very angry about lots of what things yeah, they might I be hear. I don't spend a lot of time on Twitter. So were they right to be that angry about it? It's Twitter. I don't know. Are they? <laughs> yes. You're allowed to tweet whatever angry shit you want to tweet. I guess. Yeah. Um, 
I didn't I didn't read enough about this particular question, but I don't think I like really care about people's opinions on Twitter about whether or not this was a racist hairstyle or whether or not them infl- calling it space. You see how it's just I, I I don't think that I don't know. I think that I don't care. I think that's what it is. I think that I very much like the hairstyle. It's cute. I can do my hair like that. So now my Animal Crossing character looks very much like I might one day. And at the end of the day, I don't think it's really hurting anybody. So yeah, I hope that's not too forehead, but I don't really I'll care. Take down that's my opinion on it. Cool. Uh, Trix. Um, right off the bat, there's. I always thought that there was a like technical difference between Afro puffs and space buns, like in terms of how you do them. I thought they were two different things. Uh, and as far as I can tell, they. Are are from what i've been looking up um space buns like uh the the i'm just looking at the like actual tweet again and they're definitely afro puffs like you can Cinnamon see yum, yum, uh yum. like the texture like but the fact that she got it mixed up i don't think makes her racist because like from first glance if you Pink didn't know any Pink better awesome. and you've just seen like girls around you wear two buns you're like oh they're called space buns they're called twin buns some people call them ballet buns like there's like so many different names for them um but i also think that if you i don't think she did but i think that if you willingly take something in fiction and this is really like tricky because it's on one hand it's just a game but on the other hand it's like what are we gonna like I don't, mm, so tricky, but I think that if you, uh, if she, like, knowingly, like, knew that this was, uh, a hairstyle that was Afro puffs and not space buns, and she did this anyway, would that make her, like, kind of on the wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I think this is something that can, are we, go- sorry, I guess... Uh, I'm done. To... I'm just so stuck. Oh, I thought you were gonna. I thought you. I thought you asked me a chocolate question that you were gonna ask yourself. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> stuck. Um, Brian, did you want to say anything on this topic before I go? Um, I'll just say that. Um, I'm, I guess I'm closer to a high priestess's stance on it. You know, like Twitter losing Some its shit over fucking again. nothing, right? Um, people getting on the goddamn high horse. Like what? It's it's a fictional character. It's like a fictional character, and it's a, like nice, cute thing that you do in Animal Crossing, I guess. You know, with the hair, right? Like, and like, I you have seen exactly this this style in other cultures. Like, um, who was it? Uh, Denims, I think, uh, brought it up. Yeah, you see exactly this style in other cultures. And what difference does it make if one culture even invented it first, right? Because, um, like, by from all accounts, you could. You can assume yeah, it's these about things were invented independently. It's like not that hard. Like you just, then a scientist didn't get together to like construct this new hairstyle, right? So no one really owns it. Um, but like just it's just something to lose your shit about. So yeah, whatever. Um, city cat. Um, I just want to say first and foremost that Twitter losing their shit about nothing is uh, it, it has real world consequences. Um, people have been out as, like, racist on Twitter and then lost their jobs and shit like that. Like, Twitter getting outraged over things is, um, like, it, it has consequences. And people, there were white people coming for this girl calling her a racist. This hairstyle is undeniably Afropuffs, okay? She knows that, and there were people telling her, hey, this is Afro Puffs, and she was like, I think it's cute. And then they were like, well, you're a racist for, for keeping that hairstyle now that you know. Do your Don't research. Worry. And it's I'm like, the expert of Twitter drama. I feel as though this does absolutely zero material harm at all. She has not done anything wrong. <laughs> She has made her hairstyle a cute hairstyle. She bought the new pack of hairstyles, and they are they're That's all fair. this um like their traditionally black hair. They're all in that hairstyle. They're all so to the tweet. She wanted to use one of them, like and this Nobody it's can. cute. Not it's a cute me. hairstyle. It does absolutely nothing wrong. 
and um i think people i think uh seeing a lot of the white savior types on twitter was uh exhausting and people were like coming and saying like it looks shit on you and it's like are you are you calling her in-game character ugly because it it was insane it's ridiculous like you're so ugly right now shut up it's just, it's, a, it's not her it's it's a character in game oh my gosh and like and there were people being very melodramatic and it's twitter so um but there were people who were like oh people who are saying it's just a game are missing the point I am and the rest of my community is suffering because of this post. And it's like, honey, (laughs) delete Twitter and then you won't be suffering. Like, if you didn't, if you didn't, like, and and then people were getting mad because she was getting clapped for this because people were like, hey, that girl's not a racist. I'm going to like the tweet and tell her that she looks cute to make her feel better because half of Twitter is currently saying that she's a fucking racist. Like, so... People were I'm like, oh, it. I'm just I'm mad that like, she's getting clapped for wearing a black the code hairstyle to a big in a game, which is not even black. And we should be celebrating that it's a black hairstyle. We never get them in games. And it's like, chill. You you realize that she would have gotten zero clout if you guys didn't all come out and call her a racist immediately, worry, right? This. Like, these people. I can't. I can't <laughs> deal with them. Please, someone else say something. <laughs> Did they, actually, cre- oh. did they just create this hairstyle, like these hairstyles? Did they just did this just recently come out? This update? Yeah. Because I haven't heard anything about it. I play Animal Crossing. I'm black, and I haven't heard anything about it. And the first I'm hearing about it is somebody is being called racist about it, and I feel like that's where I find myself being like problematic in the black community because I just want to say problematic shit all day long about things like that. Like, oh really? This is how you're gonna help me? You're gonna help me. By not so, telling me about the hairstyle, but being mad about some work. white girl just wearing a hair. Like, how do you know exactly. her hair isn't curly? Leave her, leave people alone. And I, yeah, how, how do you know the uh, poster isn't black? Like, because the skin color in the game is white. No, no, no. Well, but you like, can be, yeah. wait, so you yeah. can be like a pale. But like, she has like, the Oh, yeah, true. Light. Sorry, light skin is what, the, what I want to say. You could be a light skin black person. This is not like a. You know. I'm not mixed. I'm both my parents are black. Both are my parents are Jamaican. My dad is very dark skin, and my mom is kind of light skin. I mean, people think I'm mixed all the time. I'm I'm very black. I grew up very Jamaican. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so like- you can't really tell people based on their skin color, their hairstyle, what their culture was, or what their experience is, or how racist they are. <laughs> What's weird is like I think that the clout argument in any other context kind of makes sense. So I think I saw this uprising against miley cyrus like years ago in that she sort of co-opted hip-hop music um and like r&b music and she sort of made a killing off of this and then she turned around and said this industry is very sexist this black community is very sexist and then she dropped the label so after she made i don't know how much money off of this community she just discarded it like it was a fad and people were like upset True. about this because she got she made a bunch of money. Everybody. She got a bunch of bump, and then once it wasn't suiting her anymore, she dropped it like it was a piece of attire. Where if you're black, you can't just drop it like it's a piece of attire. Hey, that is who you are. So this is part of your personhood. But like a random chick posting on Twitter, I highly doubt the clout from one post is really is really doing harm to some actual community, or is really like hurting some actual group of people. Also, yeah. like the. The, real quick, the opposite of this reaction of this is cute, I'm going to wear it, is hey, these new hairstyles are ugly and I'm never touching them. Which one would you prefer a user to have? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a, I, there's this thing I talk about on, on my channel a lot, and uh, some people may know of it, others may not. I have a thing called the code of Twitter. And the Twitter code is, uh, there's, there's, basically like four parts to it but the number one is do not discourse on twitter and i want i would but love it's so fun yeah but here's the thing if 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 i could if i could like inject one rule onto every user of twitter it would be the do not discourse on twitter and the reason is the d- twitter is structurally designed to destroy discourse 
it the way that posts literally on a on a technical level the way that posts are promoted it will always be the most contentious post that gets promoted even if it's a part of a non-contentious argument and it creates this cycle of like and then of course the people who are vulnerable to that type of contention are going to jump in on that one thing because it will be served to them based on these algorithm algorithms um the twitter code i i genuinely would you know not to toot my own horn but i would recommend everyone studying my my twitter code because it's made my life on twitter infinitely better i think something that happens is that people see twitter um as like analogous to other spaces of communication online when it isn't it's an ad platform uh, through and through everything on there behaves like an ad or or you know or ad like you you know whether it's a meme that goes viral or whatever and when you try to discourse on Twitter, when you try to have serious discussions on Twitter, it becomes a war of people throwing like post-it notes over a wall at people they don't know who's on the other side. And it's just post-it notes flying all over the place completely without any context. It's a zone of madness when you try to do discourse on there. And, and I think this is a great example of that perhaps because I think that it's like this particular topic is like – I mean, this particular post is like not a really good example of something like, you know, cultural appropriation, which is a real problem that can actually happen, um, which and a very complicated discussion. Um, it's not really a good example of that, but it becomes that. And once somebody has determined that it's that, that post will determine future interaction with entire sections of the site that are coming in with, this, oh, this is a battleground of cultural appropriation. Well, I don't like cultural appropriation, so I'm going to fight this as if it's that battleground. And it's just like, oh, God. Um, so I don't know, like with regard to the original tweet, it's really hard to pull much from it because it just seems like a lot of people getting mad over things that aren't actually represented in the post itself. Um, but I do think that some of the topics that are like tangential to it can be discussed and actually can be really like points of learning for a lot of people because I mean, um, like hell, like cultural appropriation is a serious, is a serious problem. I mean, this is something that can be, I mean, to a certain degree, I mean, obviously I think some people perhaps take it too far and are, are, you know, are, are too rigid on their interpretations of culture. But in general, I think there are very, um, very specific examples. You maybe you mentioned even Miley Cyrus. I don't know enough about it to really say that's a clear cut example. I don't know about, I just don't know. Um, but I mean, I can think of video games that have just like, um, caricaturized and stolen like icon like important and iconic parts of of a culture and turned it into like this caricature for like quick bucks you know what i mean like i don't know like i remember overwatch having um like a native american themed skin and it was just like oh my god like this is like a caricature and also really offensive and it's not taking any seriousness with the cultural aspects that are being represented here it's just using it as like a way to like make it exotic or something and i think there's problems with that that can be discussed but that's not going to happen on twitter it's never going to happen on twitter so think about obeying the the code <laughs> number if I one can add I, to the twitter thing I, really quickly i will say there's one more aspect to twitter that makes it impossible to actually discuss things which is the nature of the first of all you can't edit posts you can't go back and change it and say edited hey this is my new opinion right so there's no way that this person True. could ever go back and say, sorry about using, you know, the word space buns. Um, I'm correcting them now to Afro buns. Um, so anyone who sees this post who hasn't seen any of the context is going to think, okay, this person still thinks they're called space buns, right? Second, the format, you can only type, what, 240 characters? You can't make a nuanced argument in 240 characters. Third, you if you want to clarify something, you're probably going to make another thread. And someone who sees one of your old threads or an old post is probably not scrolling through your entire feed to figure out if you've corrected your That's language or true. changed any opinion. So it's just like, oh, okay, th this person said this thing and they've probably never changed and they're still a racist, horrible person. And it's like, okay, great. So I think that I guess the only way to remove this is to delete it. And if you delete the post, we'll see you were wrong all along and you're a racist and that's why you deleted it. So there's, there's no fucking winning. <laughs> Okay, I, I want to push back on this. Um, personally, as like a Twitter insane person myself, um, if you can't make an, uh, a nuanced argument in 250 characters, that's on you. Uh, you need to get better at Twitter. Um, I cannot tell you the amount of times that I have gotten zero sleep in a night because I've been up all night arguing with people on Twitter because it, it, it is so fun. I love it. And you know what? It never goes anywhere. And I've never changed anyone's minds on anything. And it is brilliant. And that is how Twitter is supposed to work. 
It's not a flaw in Twitter. That is how it's supposed to be. Okay. When it's I argue this with way. <laughs> exactly. When I argue with two turfs at the same time and they say you'll be a turf one day, and when I say I don't think I'll ever be transphobic one day, and then one of them says, Well, we're not transphobic, and then the other one goes, Oh no, fuck trans people, I am transphobic. And then they start a second argument about being transphobic, and then I get to watch that. Oh my god. Like, I can't, you, you guys have no idea. Um, it is. This is why you obey rule number one. Do not discourse. It will drive you mad. Listen, you might think you're having fun, but I promise. Here's a, here's a secret. Ready? I'm going to give everyone here watching a secret. You will have 20 times as much fun as you as you would debating somebody on Twitter if you put out your hot take in your 250 characters and ignore all of the comments and tell them all to come hang out in your stream chat or tell them all to come hang out in your Discord and then argue there and they might learn something and you'll get to do the same thing. It's great. It's fantastic. It's a secret. It's just don't no, discourse I on Twitter. Do it's that, horrible. Like while I'm in bed, like eating chocolate and it's like 4 a.m. Like. That's when I'm on Twitter. I can't stream at that time. Also, I don't stream. <laughs> Discord uh, is way better for discourse, believe it or not. It, it actually really, really is. Like, the number of actual, synth like, the times that I've witnessed people reach synthesis of ideas via a Discord argument where they can scroll back up and, and remember what the person said and not get lost in 16 different threads on Twitter. Oh, it's amazing. It's a, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Same thing goes for Twitch debates, by the way, also. I've actually seen people come to meaningful conclusions via Twitch debates. Even with all of the, the perverse incentives of performativity and all that, Twitch is just a better communicating platform. Twitter is not designed for that. Twitter is for memes, creams, promoting, and dunking on people you don't give a shit about. You can dunk as much as you want if you don't give a shit about them. Just realize that the moment that you start giving a shit about somebody, talking to them on Twitter is a bad idea. But again, memes and creams, promote people's content, and dunk on people you hate, you're going to have a great-ass time. That's the thing. Because if you don't care Den about their feelings, you, gonna, you don't got to discourse with them. See? It's Den awesome. Denim's in uh, Demon Mama. You guys, like, I mean, you read my soul here when it comes to Twitter. Holy shit. Um, like, you I, just, you uh, hate yeah. fun, fundamentally. Yeah. Oh, no, okay, um, I don't hate I don't hate fun. Yes, I have lots do. of fun. No, nope. um, anyway. Um, he doesn't even Mama. use Twitter. Yeah, he... I, I, on. Did I not post on Twitter? I literally just posted on Twitter today. I posted on For Twitter. For the first today. time in a month. No, I, no, I, 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 I post, You don't even I use post, Twitter. I post, I post stuff on Twitter. Your look, opinions look, on social look, media. No, tech, we'll talk about it after. Anyway, tech, look, we'll talk about it after. Uh, I put a note down. And um, Denim's were absolutely 100% correct. And Demon Mama, yes, perfect. Discourse, none. On it. It's it's a mess. It it it, it cheapens That's everything, the right? Like, you cannot of have Twitter you cannot discourse. have a beautiful. Wait, you cannot have. Is... Hold on. I'll just I'll, I'll finish this. You can't have a newest nuance argument whatsoever. Right? Exactly. Impossible. Uh, this is why I prefer Twitch because I can have oh, a yeah, long argument. I can be wrong on Twitch. I have been wrong on Twitch plenty of times. Look at my vods, right? But um, at the very least, if you look at them, right, you can follow my logic. You know, as I'm, you know, making my arguments, making my case, right. And if I was ever presented like with like a clip of like me, that? Like, like that being Gambino? wrong, right? At the very least, I could defend it. I could say, okay, well, this is the full context, right? Um, uh, this is why I thought this thing. Maybe my 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 thinking has changed now. But if you just have like a few sentences for me, that's it, right? Hell this yeah, controversial Gina. thing, and now I'm the asshole. Awesome. Now maybe I'm transphobic, for instance, right? Like what? No, why? This is why I don't want to engage. It's terrible. It's the worst. Tricks. Okay, the only thing better than Twitter drama is Facebook discourse. Oh, there is nothing better than seeing some article that's like, they're going to rename Sunday to Daughter Day, and then someone's uncle is like, I'm going to die because of this. There is nothing better. I think that Twitter discourse, it's kind of like, eh, same thing every two seconds. But what you need to do is get Double. on Facebook, go to corporate pages, and check the comments. So much better content brilliant i think i think on twitter people like have a semblance of like okay i did a little bit of research on this but on facebook people don't even care if they're wrong or, they're, or if their opinion is based in reality if it's a, an opinion they like they will they will talk about it they don't care if it's real or not this is my opinion that you're is not all kidding you need to know. you're not kidding at all like my friend has been keeps me up to date on on his twi on his facebook bullshit all the time i get texts and he's like 
he's like a 70 he's like a 76 year old man just threatened to kill me in in my dms and i reposted it onto facebook and and added his family members because i know who he is and so and like like literally i'm not kidding you like he's gotten like he has all of these screenshots of like death threats that he gets from just being like trump is dumb and then like people just come flooding in because he's got a million followers on facebook and he's just like this is the wildest shit he's like the number of times i've been threatened to a fight by a guy who's like in his in his fucking 60s is unbelievable you would not believe this and i'm like i believe it you've sent them to me well also mm -hmm. the problem with twitter is so much of it is like any like you can just make an account have whatever name you want and share like most of the time during these arguments there are that no the repercussions difference. That whatsoever is the difference between facebook and twitter discord well, Twitter, that's Discord, not Facebook. I, I can find where they work and message their exactly. boss. I can find their. That's well, not the problem with the Twitter. That's reply. the good part about Twitter. I yeah, say that's what well, I these say. ladies are leading you astray. Do not go on Facebook. Don't go back on Facebook. Do not look on your family's Facebook. Do not look on your old, old your old family. Say, don't look. Don't go. You will lose friends. You'll lose family. Just stay away from Facebook. That this all lies. Whatever you heard here was lies. Twitter is. I I don't know what to do on Twitter. I don't think anybody cares about my, you know, I just took a shit. Nobody cares about that. Um, so I don't really know what to post on Twitter, but I figured that I figured I, I should have you. a Twitter because, you know, you know, streaming. But I find that the best use of Twitter is exactly what you just said. No one knows who I am. You can't go to my, you know, you can't come. So I just tweet all, no all day long. I just Wait. go on Twitter. I just go find Donald Trump's Twitter, find him saying dumb shit, and then just retweeting it and being really angry at him to get out all my steam. You know, I drive to work and I just think angry shit and then I tweet it at our president. And That's rule like, number four. That's dunk. Listen, I can help you all. I promise. I know this is gonna sound like I'm tooting my own horn this entire time, but the Twitter code I've unlocked it. I I literally I'm, I'm not kidding you. Let let me just tell you for a second, okay? I had a like earlier this year, I was so fucking pissed at Twitter because I was having a horrible time. Everybody I knew was having a horrible time. This was right around the fucking time when Bernie stepped out. So all of left Twitter was like depressed Aww. and everybody was fighting with each other and all this shit. And so I sat down. I had taken a break from, from streaming and I was just smoking a fuckload of weed and thinking about shit. And I was like, I need to figure out this Twitter enigma thing because why does the left – why do left spaces on Twitter suck so much? Why do they suck so much? Everybody hates each other. And then I realized I needed a code, and I needed to figure out what did good on Twitter. So here's what it is. Here's the secret. I'm going to give you the whole thing. Number one is the only thing that you don't do on Twitter, which is don't fucking discourse. Just don't do it. What I mean by discourse is don't try to make sense of political topics with people you care about on, twi on Twitter or anybody. Can, can I discourse with people that I don't give a shit about? Yes, is that's that okay? four. That's that's number four. We'll get there. Number two, meme and cream, aka you can, you can, the, the horny on main stuff, Twitter is, oh my god, there's so much horny on, on Twitter. It's great. Memes? Fucking fantastic. Some of the best memes I've ever seen in my life are on Twitter. So rule number two is meme and cream. Have your fun. Number three is promote. Twitter is really good at promoting people. You can, uh, you know, you can do your streaming stuff. You can promote your stream, tell people when you're going live. That's what Prime uses it for, as you can see. You know, mostly just on there to promote content, promote your friend's content, retweet your friend's content. Awesome. And rule number four is dunk on your enemies. You, if you don't give a shit about somebody, dunk away. If you want to yell at them in the comments all day and make them mad, that's great. As long as you're having fun and they're not, that's all that matters. But that's rule number four. You can't use it for discourse because the minute you use it for discourse, you've broken its purpose. Twitter Ooh, is not a... Mom, mom, I have a question. Okay, I think I, I think have a question. Have a How is the definition of four, discourse? Four goes against number one. No, it doesn't. Yeah. No, it doesn't. I take... Okay. Discourse. Okay. okay, I think I understand. See, discourse is what we're doing right now. See, we're talking back and forth. There's an actual conversation happening. We're maybe learning things from one another, maybe disagreeing. That's discourse. It's a two-way street. Twitter, there is no real two-way streets on Twitter. One reply will generate a whole new thread, and now you're in a totally different conversation. And if somebody jumps into that, which happens all the time, so say you make a post, somebody replies to it, some third party replies to the reply, that is literally a different thread, and that will never connect back. You could be arguing, and two separate people will be getting notifications, and you don't necessarily know which one that's coming from. It's madness. That's why. Now, that's the, that's the good. Though. You see, you're it liking the dunking part. And you can't confuse it. the dunking yeah, with the discourse. <laughs> it, it is true. I mean, one of my favorite parts of Twitter, I guess I use the word discourse a bit more liberally than you do, Probably. Um, is when a guy says something or like a, a, a girl is it, it's a straight girl who is 
homophobic. They're my favorite because then I get to say, uh, can we make out now? Are we going to fuck right now? Can I fuck you right now? Uh, and then they just freak out and they don't know what to do. And I love doing it with I'm like, so but that's not discourse. By this <laughs> Wait, see, see, that's dunking. Yeah, like that's dunking. Yeah, Rule four. Right. You're, you're... It's, it's really, my partner does it as well. And it's so much easier for him to do it because he's a guy and like, I'm a really pretty girl. So it, I can't really do it with guys because they're like, what's going on? Is this, this what's happening? I'm, uh, and then um, when my partner does it, he'll be like, uh, can I can I piss I'm in your mouth him on it. right now, please? I really want to. It would make me come really hard if you would let me piss in your mouth right now. Like in the middle of a Twitter discourse conversation about like publicizing healthcare or something. And it's brilliant. It's, yeah, but see, I love it. What I'm saying is that falls under what you're doing right there falls under memeing or potentially under dunking, depending on how much you hate them. So right. it's a combo. You can yeah, dunk on someone with a meme. But see, the discourse is, when I think of discourse, and maybe it is, maybe you have a, a lib definition of, of discourse, <laughs> but when I think of discourse, I think of having a meaningful, like, I'm talking with all of you here. I like all of you, uh, you know, or at least if, if I haven't met you yet, I, I'm open to liking you. Um, so it's it's one of those things where it's like here I can have a discourse. You say something, I'm going to listen to it and I'm going to provide feedback. But when I'm going and talking to some turf or a homophobe or something like that, I don't fucking give a shit. I don't care if they go cry after I'm done tweeting on them. And that's why it's dunking on your enemies, and that's allowed. And again, my code is not some moralistic thing. It's not about making you feel guilty. It's a guide. It's like a manual on how to actually have fun, more fun on Twitter. And I think by dis separating discourse from dunking and realizing that one is good and one is bad, the discourse is bad on Twitter. That's the secret. The, it's just, by doing your, that, it it's helps just you. like your version of Jordan Peterson's 12 rules for life, except it's the four rules for Twitter. Yeah, it's the demon your, mama code of Twitter happiness. or just but the I, code of Twitter. I have, to, I have to ask. Yeah, go ahead. Um, do, are you aware of like the cum pledge? Have, have you seen that meme? Oh, of course. I feel yes. like you've taken I feel like you've taken the cum pledge and you've improved on it so much. I feel like we've, Damn. we've we're on like come pledge to what, you know? is, what is this <laughs> okay uh i can explain yeah. this meme to everyone who's here so um that is incredibly flattering mind you because uh listen uh, uh people have compared it to the come pledge in the past but it's very different than the come pledge this is a very specifically designed solution for twitter and twitter alike um the come pledge is a general rule that i think the come pledge was if i remember correctly don't argue with lefties on twitter um get more sleep and uh what was the third one? Drink more water? Uh, don't get mad online. Oh, don't get mad online. Yeah, see, that's a very general rule. But the, the code, the code is specifically for Twitter. It gives you those answers and refines it so everybody can do better on Twitter and have a better time. Um, yeah, so it's the cum pledge is great. Uh, and uh, I think it was a, a worthy endeavor, great as a general rule. Um, but the code is specifically designed for Twitter and Twitter alikes. Uh, so, yeah, I appreciate that. I posted that. it in the group chat for everyone that wants to be enlightened. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I think I think I I might have accidentally been following this and just calling dunking on people discourse. Um, like I had a, at your own a... peril, mind you. If you mix it up, <laughs> it could become bad. Have you ever seen? Come on, we know you all know somebody on this website specifically who goes between who in a conversation will go between dunking on somebody that they're friends with, maybe even on this site, and discourse, or it starts as discourse and it turns into dunking. You know how many dramas. On, twi on politics Twitch alone have started because of precisely this. It's perilous. You never want to mix them up. Prime, you know you've had them on this show before. I've done it before. You know this. The, oh, us spicy, or us fucking spicy motherfuckers who come in here and, and get in debates all the time. And sometimes on Twitter, it's so easy to slip between the discourse and the dunking. And and you might ruin a friendship over it. So don't mix, no, don't mix it up. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think I've gotten in situations where the other person has uh, wanted genuine discourse, and I've just been there to shit on them. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I had a conversation with critically thinking veteran the other day. Uh -oh. um, yeah, dunking time. <laughs> yeah, it was. He he was he was making an argument about how human rights are innate, and that's a given by God, and that's why healthcare can't be a human right. And uh, I, yeah, I was just shitting on him the whole time. And he was like, 
it ended with him being like, wow, you're a real fucking bitch, aren't you? And then blocking me. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I think he, like, unblocked me yesterday because I called him a pussy. I'm teaching people. <laughs> I, like, took a photo of the screenshot and then I tagged him again and I was like, you're a fucking pussy. And then he, he might have unblocked me from that. I don't know. But, like, uh, he was, uh, yeah, like, making horror. genuine, like, arguments about why his religion was, um, you know, the, uh, the, the right one. And um, that's, that's where, he said, where most human morality comes from. Which was, I didn't even want to argue with that, because um, you can't argue uh. with religious people on Twitter. Um, so, I, yeah, so I was just like, um, yeah, you're really fucking dumb, and I can't argue with someone this fucking dumb, and then he just called me a bitch. Oh, yeah, um, right-wingers don't have, they don't even have a semblance. They don't even have, like, a primordial version of the code. The right-wingers, they just barrel into Twitter, just just vomiting their thoughts all over the place, and it's chaos. Have you ever seen the comments of, like, a Trump tweet? And then the sub, the sub threads that, like, I challenge you, go just find a Trump tweet and look around in the comments for when some contention starts and try to follow it. It's, it's, it's mind bending. You will lose your mind temporarily. And thankfully you'll be able to turn off the app. But if you go try and watch like inter, inter right wing or like Dem versus right wing discourse in the comments, it's, it's maddening. And so once you realize that, that you can be free of that cycle and, and, and not fall in it. You know, it's tempting. You know, it lets you use the tool the way it's actually functions. So, just saying. Mm. I I don't know how we can talk about Twitter and this kind of stuff and not. Oh, it's I okay. okay I'm realizing it's a UK thing. So there was this MP, and MPs get a, a horrific amount of money towards food, two meals every day. If they're out of constituency, if they're out of area, they get like fucking forty quid a day, which is what like fifty dollars. Uh, recently, um. Dominic Grout is an MP. He spent You're like free, forty she, they grand pay. one takeaway. Use the code. Um, but anyways, he, they posted a picture. This MP he posted a picture of his House of Commons uh, dinner. Was it lunch? And it was fish and chips. Now it looked disgusting. It looked vile. There was six chips, uh, a really ugly piece of fish, and you could tell that costed an arm and a leg could. and an asshole. Like it was, you could just know. And it looked like it looked mushy peas that like. A baby had pre-ingested. Awful, awful, awful. But he posted this picture. I was like, oh, I've been debating fishery. Now, fisheries is a big issue here, especially with Brexit. Massive one. Uh, he was like, oh, after debating fisheries all day, there's nothing. Andrew Bowie, yes. Um, there's nothing like fish and chips after debating fisheries all day. Spent the evening talking fish, only one option for dinner. And it's fucking ugly, and it's overcooked. Oh shit! I've just closed the thing, and you can tell. Oh, for fuck's sake! I can't open the right. Oh, I'm gonna shit. I'm so sorry. Hang on. Oh Don't my do that. fucking god! I've got like 800 tabs open, I'm getting... and I'm like, <laughs> okay, oh, shit, I'm getting very newcomer. stressed. Okay, Andrew Bowie. Yeah, and he basically the comments were like, um, yeah, fish and he, fries. He turned yep. off shares because pe people were very rude to him. He, they were like, fucking Tory cunt. More chips than brain cells. Um, if you care, I was just, it was, it was incredible. Amazing. I can have a look. Literally only his friends can, can comment on it now. But he was like, um, yeah. And then it, it was fucking Scottish Tory six chip twat was one of my <laughs> favorites. Um, and then he posted, I regularly get asked as conservative vice chair for youth, if social media he's put kind of in, uh, might put people off getting into politics. Last night, I posted a picture of my dinner. A plate of fish and chips. These are a selection. The responses. Fuck off, you Tory cunt. Greedy shit. Hashtag wanker. <laughs> Demented. Scottish Tory six chip twat. Pretentious Tory twat. More chips Rule on his four. plate than brain cells on his head. Typical Tory moron. <laughs> Tories can't even be trusted with fish and chips. I hate them. Another lying Tory coward. Rule four. See, oh, the it dunk table. It was, it's just one of my favourite... The. Uh, yeah, I'm like, so much of my heart is filled for that MP just for posting that. The courage I he had feel, to post such a shit like Yeah, I, I feel as though oh, Australia no. has a very similar relation with Twitter and their uh, fucking political representatives. Like, every other week there's a new thing about ScoMo, who's our Prime Minister, um, uh, ScoMo being a dick. Like, it'll be like, 
the, what, there was something trending the other day that was just like, what the fuck happened, ScoMo? And it was just a bunch of people being like, you you wanted this, and then what the fuck? What's wrong with you? We all hate you. Like, it's just a bunch of people saying that they hate ScoMo, and I love it. Um, welcome, Joe. <laughs> Sorry, I keep thinking about when Maya said, I'm gonna shit. <laughs> it's, it's one of my worst habits every time I get slightly frustrated no matter how formal the occasion I'm gonna shit myself I need to stop I think I it's like great I, I think only it's great. have like two tabs open I got like stressed I was like oh god I'm, I'm gonna start like shitting too oh god Jesus Christ <laughs> I've now I've now got like eight different tabs, but four pa pages of Google, and now I've got like eight different. I don't know what happened. It was bad. No, Tumble's not a Tory. Hi, okay. Hi, Joe. We're still on the first topic, um, and we've kind of uh, evolved to this topic into general um, Twitter, Twitter discourse, discourse always being disgusting. Um, yeah. Do you have anything to say on the actual topic? Uh, no, no, no. I'll just wait for the second topic because I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Sounds like you have something to say and you don't want to. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I gen I genuinely just don't have... Tab, I mean, tab, like, tab, tab, tab. I condemn... Condemn's a strong word. I don't love any time that white people can do something and get clout for it that people who naturally... Like, uh, like for instance, Space Buns, Afropuff, if if people actually wearing that hair in real life are getting in shit because of it, are losing opportunities, uh, are having people? that sort of thing happen, and then a white person can do it and, and get clout on a game, I don't love it, uh, obviously, but uh, I, I don't play this game. <laughs> I don't really know enough about what happened to have a strong opinion on it. Okay, that's fair. I feel like I was the only one there in the trenches, uh, arguing with people and calling them fucking stupid um shit. My will be now we know why yeah, yeah. Oh, you had confused great. the and discourse the and the dunking the yeah um, you ended up in the trenches yourself <laughs> and i had a great time and oh you now. came in you're pretty angry maybe you would have had a better time if you were just dunking <laughs> but Ooh. i'm curious you enjoy being angry? do you not enjoy being angry <sighs> i'm the queen of anger that's all uh, i do yeah, I like <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, I wanted to say one more thing about the actual topic. Um, so there were people saying, like, it looks shit on you. Like, this looks disgusting, you're ugly. Um, like with these, uh, with this hairstyle. And A, yes, you're, um, you're calling a, a, an animation ugly. This is not what she actually looks like. Um, mold, but mold, B, mold. Give me those demon mama molds. What does that do? Does this teach white people the that this hairstyle is ugly? It was it it confused the hell out of me. And like people it's... being like, "This only looks Dang good on. on people with dark skin." Even if you have this like Afroy hair in real life, and you have white skin, like if that is your natural hair. I'm not pissed today. I've been relatively chill right? today. We'll see if that maintains they're, till later. Like they're saying, we'll it see. looks ugly on you, and then that's teaching. And then they they're asking like, "Oh, this should be like something that only we can do as people with dark skin." And people who have this hair, this is exclusive to us. And I don't the think it does anything descends. good at all. I think that it makes people uh, resent you. I think that it also, I think that um, coming out and calling this girl a, a racist immediately and all of that, it makes any point that you actually had of being like, hey, this could be bad because of X, Y, Z, makes all of those points completely irrelevant because now no one's listening. No one is fucking listening anymore because they're like, whoa, 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 this girl isn't a racist, you're wrong. And then you're wrong immediately. And now, guess what? Nothing you say matters because you're now the person who called this girl ugly and racist. Like, mm -hmm. if you had an actual point to make, I mean, A, don't make it on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, now you're also, getting it. like, don't mix it in. Now she's getting it. Hey, Puff. Fucking idiocy. I Okay, I will bite. <laughs> Change my mind. Um, no, but like, I, I think you're, I think you're very right. Like the fact that it's on Twitter and and sort of the outrage uh, takes away from the discourse. However, I think Twitter and and the internet has created a world where we constantly, and I know I make this point all the time, but it's created a world where we constantly conflate conflict with abuse and calling someone a racist because they're doing something that 
black people, with, this is a hairstyle that is natural to them that they get shit for and then you can play with it on an animation. There are prob problems with that. And you're allowed to have a reaction that's emotional and call someone, like, obviously a call in is always better. But you can call people out for stuff and have a discussion and start conflict without that being abuse. It happens all the time in movements. And I think this creation of binaries where there's like this black and white world where you're either right or you're wrong and that it's stagnant and that anytime anyone says that you're wrong, that is abuse, is really dangerous for progress. Um, so it's not a fully formed point, but that's my initial reaction to whenever people are like, oh, calling someone racist isn't going to get you anywhere because sometimes these fucking are racist. Like we all make mistakes. Yeah, but like, I don't think that this girl is a racist right now. And I think that's um, not like us, or not trying to educate her at all, I guess, and just saying you're a racist, it makes all of your other points stupid. Um, I do uh, want to ask you something though, Joe, because you said something there. You said that there is something wrong with this. There is something wrong with this girl using this hairstyle in this game. What do you find so wrong? What harm is it doing? Well, you're right. R wrong is wrong is a um, a moral judgment. I don't necessarily think there's like a great moral wrong there, right? However, to me, it's the same argument about like whether or not people can like actors can play roles cross race. It's not that there's a wrongness in the inherent action it's the context within which the action takes place so if people of color who naturally have hairstyle like the fact that hair is such a big deal for black women and women of color and the fact that they can be told that they look unprofessional at work because they're wearing natural hairstyles and then you get to sit in the in a game and get be told that it's cute and get clout and just put it on as a costume for me, that's the context that makes this not okay. It's not that you wanted to wear the hairstyle, of course, and hopefully eventually you can because eventually hair won't be a fucking issue. But so long as black women are getting shat on in other areas of their life for just living their life with their fucking normal hair, then yeah, I see an issue with you playing with it and, and not having any of those repercussions. It's a game. Mm -hmm. uh, Demon Mama. Yeah, yeah so there's a couple of things I want to touch on here. One is um, I think like... The, the I guess I'll start at the broadest and then I'll I'll go down. The the number one thing that I think of is like I think that uh and uh forgive me for being the that lefty who always is gonna tie everything back to capitalism in a certain way, but I think that <laughs> I think that um capitalism and the predominance of, of sort of late capitalism, especially in the United States, but abroad as well um like has led to us having this very strange understanding of what culture is where culture is no longer sort of the um organic expression of of every human talking to one another and expressing themselves and and telling stories and all these these this really really beautiful and messy thing but instead it's like these it's it's given to us in these bite-sized commodities where it's like ah this is the culture piece and and i don't really think that that's I, I think people look at it that way and struggle to get out of that that framework even when we're moving to discuss culture at large as a much um more complicated issue and i think that's probably something here um that could be going on as well and then on another level it's like um while i think that there are certainly examples of like white people um sort of maliciously uh i mean the one that comes to mind it immediately is like um i mean you have blackface and then you also have like like native american costumes at at halloween like these seem as particularly um offensive uh, examples of like um masquerading as someone that you're not and and flaunting that in a very weird way i don't know that that applies to the same degree to something like a video game where um where people might have no idea they might have no idea at all and also like character customization in video games is so alienated from something like like even a mm -hmm. halloween costume that um you know someone could indulge in in a very natural thing of going oh i love the way this hair looks on my character without ever actually touching on uh on any sort of connection um to to its cultural roots and part of that i think is perhaps on the fault of the game um the game companies perhaps on the fault of culture at large but i don't think it's um in where this crosses with twitter is i don't think that it uh, uh i think um twitter specifically um but a lot of online places i think this was an issue on tumblr as well twitter and tumblr have um 
distorted views of what uh, justice, learning, and progress really are. Um, because I don't see anything gained from taking some random person who just happened to stumble upon a hairstyle that they liked in a game and then making them the sort of, um, the subject of like this, this is the, the, this is the thing we're going to talk about to represent to you that this is a problem when there's tons of other examples that don't involve like pillorying some random kid and that's that's the other thing there's a lot of kids on tumblr and and twitch there's yeah. and twitter i mean a lot and you can't always tell because of what we were talking about before the anonymity of twitter like uh you never know and i remember this this is something that i forced myself to think about all the time is when i see something and my blood pressure starts rising and i go and then i go could it be that a 14 year old is tweeting this Yes, actually, it could be. I'm going to put down the phone and just go do something else with my life because there's a good chance that this is just a kid who hasn't actually experienced or thought about these things. And I don't mean to be like I'm trying to avoid being as ageist as possible, but the reality is that mm -hmm. some sometimes when you're new to the Internet, when you're young and you haven't experienced a lot of life le yet, you may make some dumb decisions. So, I mean, I think it's I think all of us would agree here that hopefully we're all smarter than we were when we were 14 <laughs> but i think this also touches on the point that you made earlier where um overwatch had like a native american skin by the way they don't have any like native american characters because they have they so do. like if you look at like the they rest of their characters they actually do is like a pretty good job like they're indian characters voiced by an indian voice actress they're they're mexican characters voiced by a hispanic voice actress i'm not sure if she's actually mexican so i don't want to make that claim so they, they do yeah, do sure. a generally a good job but then like why is farah an egyptian character waiting in native <laughs> american outfit that doesn't make any sense and i think i want to like add to your perspective of like everything yeah, on twitter fair. with also saying that like some random user using something and liking it that's an opportunity to explain something like hey by the way this is like a this is more traditionally yeah, her, her like, uh, something nation. that like we see in these cultures or whatever right um whereas like when a corporation does it and they make money off of it mm -hmm. then it's insidious then it's yeah. like why are wait why are you doing this why are you taking this culture making a bunch of money off it and then like you're not even gonna like at least hire someone within this community and like you know provide opportunities for people mm -hmm. in this community you're just gonna profit off of it where i think that's the real problem that we can look at and address can i ask uh well, i want to hear what joe has to say uh but i also want to ask it would it have been different if this character had blue skin, right? So, like, lots of companies like, avoid this or, or uh, you know, characters avoid this by just simply changing the skin color, like, to something that no one has, right? Um, and then you can, uh, you know, put whatever you want onto that character. That character can be what you want it to be, right? And then, again, uh, we, we, we avoid these troubles altogether. So if the character was blue and had the same hairstyle and, like, green hair or something, right? You can draw it on anyone's head. Green hair, um, except, of course, for uh, Temple. Oh, that's her natural hair. Um, uh, if it wasn't <laughs> for that, then um, well, would this be any different, uh, Joe? Um, well, I just want to respond to the, the Twitter thing again. I mean, first of all, Kat, like, I don't live in, in the game world, so you've actually hey, given me a lot uh, mods, to think about you in get terms this... of like, when you can modify everything about your right, character can you get this person out of here? Yourself, can somebody ban uh, them all from chat? This is stupid. That might have different issues, but I think reducing it to... If the game it's fun isn't helpful because that argument can be pushed out to movies it's just a movie it's Thank television you, it's just a comic Appreciate book it. then you suddenly can't make any cultural criticism at all Thank because you, it's just meant to be for fun Much love. in terms of twitter and and youth it's on hard twitter, for me to this do is something from, uh, i find really OBS. interesting so i have had Thank you, uh, a couple of serious you. bouts of um like inflamed, me, uh responses on twitter some have been uh so many bands legitimate on, it happens, on academic but sort of issues that i've um uh sort of made a point on and people have come back at me but probably the worst response i ever got was when i made a comment about the WNBA, um and a bunch of 14 year old boys came at me and i knew they were 14 and i knew they were young and Aww, i knew thank you so much leather mr saoc i'm happy to be back cool too level. i've been um, hyped for these were people threatening to kill me threatening to I got rape a lot of stuff me to do making this comments week. about who Tons i was as a person obviously this is not an actual engagement with the discussion at all but it is this anonymized sort of hyper vitriolic twitter hellscape doom scrolling sort of area we live in on twitter and i think that regardless of age 
you need to learn at some time. And, and I think young people are activating earlier and earlier politically because of the internet. And we do have a responsibility online. Yes, yeah, the stock is broken. I'll fix it. Say, I'm going to talk to a white nervous about it. And how could you do this? Of course, that's, but we do live in a culture that loves to make opinions like Well, we'll fix like that someday, this. syllabic. And so that's Don't kind worry. of the language that Twitter speaks in. So it's hard to avoid it. Um, and I think... Yeah, it's stalking it's, Bosch's site. As much as a responsibility... The, the, there is we're discussing cultural appropriation sort of in general look at how Twitter. we say things and work out if that's the most effective way to say it noting that most people on twitter are clout chasing anyway the other thing is being responsible for like not always taking like if i took everything that everyone said to me on twitter as like gospel i would not be online at all <laughs> i would be hiding somewhere fearing for my life so like i think the responsibility goes I think it's uh, complicated. My answer to everything. <laughs> uh, but what if? Um, that's your question. Answer, uh, well, well, I don't want to answer that question. Uh, mm. But first, I want to start by saying that, um, like Donald Trump, like fires people on Twitter. So I, I think that goes <laughs> to show how, like, um, like how like detrimental and how important uh, Twitter can be, and also how like nonsensical and. Good it's because he's a coward. Jammies, he, yes. he literally yeah. can't do it to his to their face. He, he, no, he doesn't. Yeah. He, he can't confront people. Awesome. He thought he could say you're fired, and then it came down to it, and he want, like wants to do it on TV still, but he can't. So he does it on Twitter. It's a whole cringe situation. But mm. anyway, Twitter is important, but also yeah, should go pop, somewhere and die. It's I, not a big deal, but this is why we talk about it. It's just my take. But um, you asked if if they were blue, would that be better? No, <laughs> no, um. I, I think he said not that it would be better, just that it would be different. Different yeah. or less argumentative or whatever. And uh, no, I don't really think so. I think it would be pretty much the, the same exact thing. But I do play video games and I play Overwatch. So I would just go for worse because um, Farah is, uh, she is Egyptian. And with all the, you know, I'm not going to say Overwatch is like perfect and they do everything fantastic and perfect. But what I am going to say is they make an attempt and they make a pretty noticeable attempt and they have lots of representations of all kinds of culture so i think that it was definitely a ha you know i never honestly i i've just been looking into native american culture and realizing how much i put that on the back burner of my mind and how just ridiculous and ignorant that is and i i didn't even notice that there was a native american costume in the game and i think that that's an issue i don't think that native american culture is a costume to be had so whether or not she was egyptian or blue that it would still be that that skin was a costume because they wouldn't they, they weren't going to make all of her skins native american because if they did that that'd be like why wouldn't you just make the character native american of course so it's still just going to be that one skin and it's like well one thing i i feel i would be uh wrong to uh not mention is is uh farah is actually canonically half native american a uh, first nation oh, wait, specifically yeah sure. um, it was revealed in one of the comics i, I know i'm a i'm a lore nerd um, I'm not nerdy enough, apparently. Nonetheless, what? nonetheless. <laughs> What's that? What, who is this character, Farah? Who? Uh, Farah, Farah is Overwatch. from Overwatch. Yeah, she's oh, half okay. Egyptian and, and half First Nation. Um, grew mm -hmm. up in Canada. And um, according to the lore. Uh, but nonetheless, the, 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 the Native American-themed skin did get flack because it was, um, again, very caricatured um, and also like... Uh, there's a lot of they, they treaded they weren't very careful with it let's just put it that way and Wait. and the thing is like i think there's room for discussions about that and i think the, the 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 what if the character had blue skin would that make it different is actually an interesting question because another game by the same exact company um blizzard uh it, which is the world of warcraft has had a lot of issues with this um something <laughs> i've been talking about a lot given that i've recently started playing the new expansion again and there is a lot of um really really questionable racial caricatures um cultural caricatures that go on in world of warcraft um and it can be pretty problematic at times i mean um like for example like the worst example of this is perhaps the the goblin characters which are um green skinned to try and toss it off but but literally have numerous um anti-semitic uh stereotypes baked into their culture it's ter it's actually terrible and um so the the answer is no it actually doesn't like they i think corporations might think that it does or it, it lets them like sort of plausibly deny these these sort of things but it really doesn't and the fact of the matter is that um it is possible to have good representation or to even have 
um, these cultural elements in your games, you just have to do so respectfully. And the fact of the matter is that a lot of corporations really haven't. They really haven't done their due diligence. I want to add on to that really quickly. Um, I think this ha this happened in, in D and D as well. D recently, like I think within this past Thanks year, D and D has had some race problems where people are like, "Hey, this seems really weird." And like, I haven't really de like delved into it too hard, but essentially, it was about I don't oh, fuck. Was it about like the the orc class? I don't remember, but yeah, it, it had the same yeah. problem there where they're not human beings. They don't have like white skin or brown skin or anything like that. And second, I want to say actually. I think I know what comic you're talking about. I think I know what lore comic you're talking about. It's the one where like there's a picture of like Anna on a date with some random dude, and that that dude is is her her dad. But mm -hmm. the weird thing about this is the comic was released like two years after Overwatch was released. Yeah, yeah. A lot of this that that's a big so, problem on Blizzard. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and also it, it did seem a little bit damage controlly. I mean, there's a lot you could point to a lot of that with Overwatch specifically. Overwatch is kind of one of their lines where they've done a lot of the the damage control on on social justice issues that have raised that have come up uh, across the. I mean, the company as a whole has this. Um, I mean, you know, has this. To be problem. fair, I will say to High Priestess's point, I think Overwatch has done like a lot of like really cool and very good stuff. You know, like. They their their box character, their leading character. They made her a fucking lesbian. Like, oh hell yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. Like, and and it's not like some side character. They didn't, they weren't like, oh, who's easy? Uh, Zarya. Zarya's the lesbian. No, they were like, no, no, fuck it. The character that we're choosing to represent our game. That's the that's the one. No, she's not yeah. bi. No, no, she's a lesbian. And it's like, oh wow, that's actually pretty cool, you know. So they and they've made again with the voice actors. They've made genuine effort to try and hire people of these ethnic groups to voice the characters, which is really cool. Yeah, so two things I want to build off of on that. One is that uh, this kind of is a broader point, but fantasy as a genre has had issues for a very long time um, with race specifically. And um, a lot of this is, I mean, honestly, I hate to say it, but a lot of this is on the fault of the original creators of Dungeons & Dragons and Warhammer, those two universes which are crazy, crazy influential in um in fantasy fiction baking in like a lot of racial essentialism like for example one of the things they're now no longer doing in D&D &D, which I think is great something that I've supported for a long time is there's there's um they're moving away from having like racial bonuses which was like a huge part of D&D &D. like whatever race you pick in D&D &D, if you're an orc you get plus 2 strength and minus 1 intelligence or something like these sorts of things and they're they're moving away from that completely where race doesn't have intrinsic bonuses or anything like that um and taken them a long time but that's something that i've always uh that i've seen as a critique against these things for a long time so it is a problem in fantasy fantasy has had a lot of like race essentialism baked into it that i really am uncomfortable with and that i think people are increasingly uncomfortable with um but then also um the other thing i wanted to say was um with with stuff like video games there's a uh, i'll quote anita sarkeesian on this it is important to simultaneously be able to critique and enjoy um, problematic works of fiction. And that's 100% true, especially on stuff like um, like World of Warcraft or Overwatch, which are these massive collaborative endeavors with some really good people and some really shit people working on them. It's impossible to create such a massive thing without tons of people, and it's just a fact of the matter that there's going to be elements that are worse than others. I mean, for example, the new expansion, again, much like you mentioned with them putting a frontline character as a gay character, that's incredible. In the new expansion of World of Warcraft, one of the main characters, one of the main story characters is actually a, a quite well um, represented um, trans man character. And that's fucking incredible that that's even there. And like, it's not even like tokeny really. Like they've done a good job of writing the story in very carefully and making it so that like, yeah, you actually have to, if you pursue this person's story, they open up to you at, when you're go about to go into like, you have to delve into their memories and they're like, listen, like, please, like we're about to delve into my memories. Just please be sensitive to this fact. And I'm like, holy shit, they actually did it. They actually put like a prominent character with without like doing the mass effect like oh hi did you know i'm trans like wait no no wait, they did this in inquisition too and i thought in inquisition they actually did it well yeah i don't i don't know if you, it's been done I don't well, know if you yeah. played inquisition but in inquisition they had a, a a trans male character but like if you played the game just normally 
you didn't even know that they were like when i played it the first time i didn't even know that they were trans i was just like oh okay this this guy is here okay cool and it, but if you pursued that and if you went and you actually did quests with this person etc then you found this information out so it's not like this is oh, we need you guys to know this character is trans please it was just like hey we're introducing this character for anyone who like likes to really get into the world and everything you'll find it but for people who are just playing they want to just get straight through uh like you're not going to find it you know and i think that that's yeah. really cool yeah, I feel like um, I feel like this kind of representation can be fucked up really easily with any kind of uh, minority. Like, um, I'm not sure if any of you fucking nerds watch Doctor Who, but um, the character Billy, oh my gosh! At first, it was like, oh yes, cool, she's she's black and she's a lesbian, and that's good. That's good. We've got a lesbian character. But then every single episode a guy would like hit on her and she would be like honey i'm a lesbian i don't <laughs> like guys and it's like okay we get it or like like people would look at her strangely and she would be like oh my skin color like e like and it would happen like every single episode and it would be put into places where it just didn't make sense and it took away from like the story and shit like that like there were some instances where it was really natural where they like went back in time to a time where people were like really sexist and really racist and like she sat in a chair and someone was like how dare you be sitting in that chair right now and then uh obviously the white male character the doctor had to step in and be like that's my friend and then like slap the guy in the face which was stupid and dumb and like she should have stood up for herself but like it was good that kind of stuff is okay but uh like every time she meets someone being like yeah, some i like do, pussy. That's fine, like well. um it's strange it's and strange and is, that's not how real the romans? Act. what about the romans nobody even is asking for this like the minorities no. aren't even asking for this either we're like no 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 please don't represent us this way please can you please write someone that isn't like this and then and the people on the right are conservatives or whatever you want to call them like the uh what is it called the gatekeepers of the gaming communities or whatever it is they'll be like see this is what you want you're ruining our media and it's like we don't want this. We don't want this shit, dude. Yeah, I think people like have this failure to understand that like uh like a corporation like extremely clumsily attempting to broaden its its maximum possible user base by means of like like putting in like injecting the rainbow capitalism like yes, here we go. We'll get 10 more customers this way. Like that that's not representative of what activists and and not even activists just yeah. everyday people um, I find this particular topic, which I'm really glad that we're talking about this now from the Twitter thing, and that is, again, a testament to all, everyone's ability to sort of dive in on it. Um, but yeah. it's something that really is interesting to me because I think, like, uh, representation is this really complicated emotional thing. Like, I mean, fuck, like, I can't even think of, like, a I can't even think off the top of my head of like a trans character I've felt represented by in mo in most mass media. Um, but I can, I can think, uh, I can think of when they announced when Tracer was lesbian and how big that, how big of a thing that was for me and how I literally was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I like literally was excited. He's as and lame as it is. in a really tasteful way. That's yeah. Like about. they did a really, yeah, they, it was wholesome. I mean, it wasn't perfect, <laughs> but it was wholesome. And like, that sort of thing can feel incredibly thrilling if you've never gotten representation before. And so I do yeah. think representation is an important thing, but I do think that uh, especially a lot of the cultural critics on the right are just so far up their own ass that they don't understand. They don't understand like the difference between, hey, like we're happy that we got something versus this is the way we hope that it would be, you know? Yeah. So I want to say one more thing about Doctor Who and I'll go to tricks. So um, the current Doctor, the most recent Doctor, 13, she is a girl. And this is the first female Doctor. I mean, not really. There was one, like, in the old, uh, like, uh, classic Who. But that's uh, nerd shit. And if you're not uh, crazy like me, you probably don't know about that one episode that they became a woman. What do you mean um, Romans? What do you mean the Romans? I don't like, know what you're talking about. Sorry. This is a nerd community, right, where there's already, oh. like, the Doctor is a guy. You know what I mean? Like, it's oh, a he. Know. Um, so when making this transition, you would have to be incredibly careful. And they fucked it up. In the first season that she had, they absolutely fucked it up. Because every single episode, that's not even an exaggeration, literally every single episode, so someone would be like, where's the doctor? And she would be like right in front of them, and she would be like, I'm the doctor, I'm a girl. And it's like, 
uh, like, they would be like, what? The doctor's a guy. And then she would be like, not anymore. And then she would, like, point her sonic screwdriver at something and it would that's explode. That's so good. Genius. And it was, See, that's the kind um, of stuff I'm talking about. Insulting. <laughs> Uh, none of the uh, the women who love Doctor Who enjoyed it at all. All of the men took it as a personal attack. Um, it was stupid, and it was horrible writing, and they learned nothing from Billy's character, because um, that season was a massive flop, and it was because the writers were shit. Um, and I feel like they picked it up with the second season that she had because this current doctor she's had two seasons so far and the second season is i'll do better. it i'll do it then. i nearly didn't watch it because the first season was so bad City. but the second season she doesn't do that all the time yeah i had a quick question that came from my chat and i feel like this might fly well with you i don't know about it there was apparently a scene with uh with with this character and the romans and something oh, yeah, about billy like... and the romans yeah, yeah okay yeah. so that scene, uh, so they go, they go, go back I got and they you. see the Romans uh, time travel, and the Romans are all bisexual, right? And they're like, well, this is normal. Normal people are bisexual. And then straight people are discriminated against, and so are, like, homosexual people, because they're like, what? You only like one gender? That's so weird. And then, like, uh, like they were all kind of, like it was all these guy romans so they were kind of just mingling and being cool with each other and being bi you know our thighs and well being bi all the time and then billy shows up and one of the guys hits on her and she goes oh no i don't swing that way and then they're like whoa okay you weirdo you only like women like and it was because being bi was the normal it was so strange and it's just oh god no i want to go to tricks because she did have her hand up um, I have the most cursed idea for a, uh, a thing to bring up. Um, oh speaking of representation, recently, uh, in the whole thing of, like, things that happened on November 5th, Destiel, Supernatural had a thing where they finally announced that two of their characters that have been shipped for, like, ten years or so are finally, like, a thing now, and it was completely out of the blue. There has been no hint towards it whatsoever. One day they were just like, hey, he's going to confess his love. And it was the most homophobic coming out scene I've ever seen. Purely because it was like, I love you. And he was like, ugh, I love you too. Like it was clearly there was not a single gay in the room. Does anyone else know about this? No, but it uh, flooded my uncle... fucking Twitter and now I know what it's about. No, I don't know about this, but my chat is screaming in agony. So I'm guessing you touched on a good one. <laughs> Uh, Tumble, do you know uh, about this? Um, yeah, I do. I never actually watched Supernat. I watched two episodes and was bored, and it had gone on for so long. I was like, I can't catch up now. I'm never watching it. Um, but I did hear about it. I heard about that more than the whole Putin thing. Um, yeah, it was extremely homophobic. But I think the the reason why they did it so quietly and so subtly was because that um homophobic munter. What's he called? I can't remember which one's homophobic. One of the actors is apparently very um that he's a, apparently is a very hardcore not the one that confessed the love, the one that was stood there like Yeah, yeah. Jensen Ackles. He's he's very he's been like for the past ten years like, uh, I just hate the idea of like that. Like why are you shipping me with a character who's my yeah. co worker? Like he's so That's against the it. problem. The problem is like co workers. I would never and... want to date someone who's my co-worker. And and then well, uh, he's I'm, like I'm going... jokes. And then now that it's out, and he's like getting some flag for it, he's like, um, actually, I've shipped them since episode one. Like I, and it's like, no, you were incredibly rude to fans who had this idea. You have been against it from the very beginning. You didn't want to do any of the scenes. Stop it. But also, the Putin thing is so basically for anyone who missed it. Someone started a thing on Tumblr, because it's always on Tumblr, that apparently now that Destiel's canon, Putin announced that he was, like, quitting, and everyone thought it was, like, a serious thing, and so then everyone was like, oh my god, Destiel wins, Putin is finally cancelled, and it just went out of control, and it was the best day of my life, Aces. honestly. The internet just lost it on Good November to see you. 5th. People honestly thought that Putin, Vlad Vladimir Putin? Of yes. Thought that he quit because of <laughs> yes. 
People are fucking, oh my god, and humanity. It was incredible like, because of it. It was like the spiritual nature of like this happened and then this happened. And the spiritual nature of this affected that oh, happening. It's it's like, it wasn't, it wasn't someone, like he saw Destiel and was like, man, fuck this. Well, that's, that's what someone said really happened. And something. so everyone was like, I've read it on the internet, therefore this is what happened. And everyone was like, oh my god, this is what representation can do. <gasps> I'll check that but, out afterwards, um, Gayfesh. So Supernatural has finally wrapped up. It had a final episode. It was terrible. Um, after 15 seasons. So the show's been going for like too long. Like it should have ended years ago. And um, the whole thing with this is just this literally it is a character that has never once shown that. love towards anyone apart from i think there was one girl versus um, the most like macho like i fuck women i i love women i would never have a male like it's and then the writers are like oh you haven't elf? heard Oof. match me yeah we're talking about Dusty and right now. it just came out of nowhere and they're like this is good it's representation right it's like technically technically you've said that these are two queer characters however everything leading up to this one episode has said otherwise like if i i literally i didn't watch season i think i stopped around season 10 or um, 11 maybe i think we're moving and on from if this i now, hadn't though, seen that twitter strong, thing i would have just been like that. yeah a show about straight people because there's literally nothing else so even though it's like i think three episodes before the 15 i think it's like so three episodes at the end Versus, I think, over 500 that they had total. Like, at what point is it too late? So, I want, yeah. It's something, I'm not sure if I brought it up on this panel, like, weeks and weeks ago, or somewhere else. I did, I said, I said this on stream before. But, like, um, it makes me really uncomfortable to see, like, um, two, like, um, like gay, gay, in quotes, uh, characters, like, getting together on TV. Like, it, like... It bothers me because of the way it's usually done, right? On another CW show, uh, it was like uh, the 100, I think it was. Um, oh, I, yeah, you know I, I know talk? this. Yeah, there was this the <laughs> the main character, um, like she was like super straight like before, right? And then all of a sudden, like the, the next season, like here's her hooking up with a, a girl, and she's like, it's like super hot, like it's like it's done for like me right like me as a male obviously right but like there's no build up there's no like romance like if you look at the previous, or previous and then one of them dies the, if you look at the previous one love interest like you could see like a build up like you know they didn't like each other but now like will they won't they and you know right i hate love interest like in general like i just don't like it but anyway yeah, but, like, I've, I've... it's a natural progression but then well, as soon as we uh it's the lesbian it's like all right they're fucking and aren't you excited about this and it happens all the time it makes me super fucking uncomfortable i hate it um yeah, do you want to know I what the it's opposite like it's like similar to watching lesbian porn that's like obviously done with two straight moms yeah. who were just like oh yeah mm, uh, you like that right like it's and it's so obviously done like in the framework for like straight men to be like fuck that's two girls fucking i'm gonna come like it's not made <laughs> by or for gay people it's made for straight men i won't know anything about it choices. but if you Listen, if, you, say, oh, <laughs> if you if you if you want to see good lesbian representation you gotta watch adventure time and just take oh that shit God. in because that was the slowest burn clearly the writers had this in mind for a fucking really long time they were dropping hints about fucking uh about setting up this love arc and the bubbleine arc everybody in my chat's now going ah, because it's amazing it is genuinely sweet and it's this long slow burn very organic arc and it's just incredible and it's it's like all been confirmed now officially and there was a bunch of drama about it because for a while um it it was suspected that cartoon network was keeping the lid on it because they didn't want to risk you know advertising stuff and then they finally got to got the green light to go forward with it and now it's a big success and it's just oh it's just wonderful it's beautiful so there's the opposite um, yeah well, there is yeah, she right I, I wanna while, while we're here, I wanna touch on queer baiting um in shows. Please. Yeah, uh I'm not sure if you watched Gotham. Um, I, I only watch nerd shows. Um, I like Gotham. Yeah. I haven't finished it though. Don't don't ruin it for me. Okay. Um I'm gonna talk lesbians. about it. Um 
So there are two characters. So it's the the Riddler and the Penguin, right? The and the Penguin, uh, I know. he's actually played by um, oh, yeah. a, a, like a gay a, a gay actor. And um, pretty much immediately, uh, like the first interaction that they had in the first season was like uh, the Riddler's like passed out somewhere, and the Penguin saves him, and then he wakes up like in the Penguin's bed. So pretty much immediately, yeah, that's fair. Uh, all of the young queer fan base uh, shifted. And it was great. And the entire show, they were just, like, like giving giving each other looks. And, like, the Penguin ends up actually, like, falling in love with the Riddler. And then the Riddler, like, starts having hallucination fantasies about the Penguin. But he's straight. Like, the Riddler is... He dates two women in the show, and when um, the penguin comes out and he's like, I'm going to tell Ed that I love him, Ed's like, uh, this is weird. Mm. Like, um, and it just, that's it. Like, it ends there. Like, their whole relationship is like, uh-oh, now he likes me. I'm going to, like, try and kill him or something. Like, it's weird. It was weird. Like, I'm... they had undeniable, like, chemistry. Like, it would have been perfect. If because you were talking about the build up of different characters, like in their relationship that they have with straight relationships, and with this one, the build up was there. They had such a strong friendship. They had such a strong connection. Um, admittedly, it was a bit fucked because like the uh, the penguin like killed both of the Riddler's girlfriends, um, and then was like there for him, and that created a lot of the chemistry. Bye um, Riddler. Bye Riddler. But, like, them being friends and shit like that, like, it was, it felt organic. And then for them to just be like, nope, we got you. Like, they teased, like, snippets on Twitter and shit like that. And the writers was, were, like, tweeting shit. And yeah, being, that's like, true charm. The Penguin and the Riddler. And then, like, uh, like they would, like, clip that scene of the Penguin being in the mirror going, like, I'm going to tell Ed I love him. And then everyone was like, holy shit, they're going to get together. And the scene was like, true uh, oasis. Ed and Ed was like, "What?" And then he was like, "I, I, I think that I like, I want to be your partner." And then Ed was like, "Oh, like a business partner?" Like it was so lame. Homophobic. And it was yeah. I, I just, okay, I have mixed feelings about this. One, one, uh, I think um, bring up the women. I hadn't thought of this before. I, I had seen up to this point, um, so you didn't spoil me, uh, despite your best attempts. Um, but uh, uh, I um. I, I, I think the women were were fridged, right? Like, uh, um, Trix knows what I'm talking fridged. about. Yeah, they're always fridged, fridged, right? Um, in case fridged. you don't Wait, know, define that term. Yeah, so, I'm about to, fridging. I'm about, I'm really about to say, it, but go ahead. No, Trix, go ahead. Fridging comes from a Green Lantern comic where he comes home and his girlfriend has been killed and stuffed into his refrigerator. And it's basically any term where the woman is killed off or harmed so the guy can be like, oh, I have inner turmoil now. Oh, that's I right. Have to- yeah, his his first girlfriend, he actually killed his first girlfriend himself, but then Ed, uh, the the penguin kills his second girlfriend. But they're yeah. the same fucking woman. It was so weird. Yeah, his it was the same woman. With the women was- <laughs> insane it was the same actor and they were just like oh they look the same and he's like infatuated with her because she looks like his old girlfriend and it was yeah it was weird it was weird Um, his straight relationships were not healthy they weren't healthy they weren't good this kind of happened with star wars too didn't it like um the whole thing i don't know i'm not that much of a nerd i don't know i i I am (laughs) uh, there was there was even some like frustration it appeared on the on the part of the actors uh for um poe and finn Um, Like there was a lot of that like hinting and and like they played it up and there were all these moments like even written into the movies where it's like it's almost like anime level like where they like fall on each other and it's like oh hey buddy and like they're all like super close and all these shots where they're just like super super intimate with one another but both of them are completely oblivious in this in this very particular way and so and there's actually an interview with the um, the actor for Poe Dameron I always forget his name. Um, Uh yeah um and he and said he, that he was playing romance yeah he said that he was like he was like oh like we really wanted to do all this stuff there was all this chemistry between me and john boyega and like and like oh but but you know they just weren't having it so whatever they're gonna do with what they want it was like a throwaway comment but it was clear he was pretty pissed off so it's like oh shit like it really looks like they were leaning towards that direction trying to make it happen and then just yoink and then disney even went so far as in the third movie to advertise we're going to have the first 
queer character in Disney in in Star Wars history, and then it was just some random people in the background, like no joke. Literally queer baiting. Literally, yeah, that queer was baiting. queer yeah. baiting. But they, I want to push back like, against the other thing. The, well, I yeah, want to okay. finish my point quickly because uh, the other thing um, that she had brought up in Gotham, I don't, I'm not, sh- I don't feel that it was homophobic. Like there was. I didn't say it was got, homophobic. Text okay, it. Yeah, I'm just saying. Well, I'm just saying. I I don't feel like it's homophobic, um, because but you Trix have, will you like, like start. I, Trix will start her tone. Right back. Homophobic. Enjoy. Um, like she'll call the wall homophobic. If my yeah. boss is late, that is homophobia. I okay. don't get. <laughs> but but I, I just like I I well I I think that's just fine. You know, like uh, you because this happens to people all the time, right? Like you put your heart out and you get rejected, right? This happened to be two two guys, like. He, but no, but you interested. don't understand. You don't understand. They had like the actor Corey Michael Smith. They had him like tweet like, "Oh, by the way, Ed is uh canonically uh he's bi, he's queer." By the by the way, before this episode comes out, where the penguin is confessing his love, I just want to let you know that Ed is queer, that the Riddler is queer, and then it was like, "Oh, so he's queer and he's queer and they have chemistry." And mm-hmm. the the writers were the writers were like dropping things of like they're gonna get together, and then they didn't. It's the exact same thing that happened. Okay, so if together. it's if it's if they're trying to drop hints like that, okay, uh, then I I understand it. But like purely looking at the show, right? Purely looking at the text of the show, I mean, if there's even if like two queer people get together, that isn't or, or two queer people are friends, doesn't mean they're going to get together. One can be interested in another, and then it just doesn't happen, right? As a they had man, a scene I, I, where they like nearly kiss, where they were I, like looking at each other and they were like, and then and then one of them pulled back and was like, "Whoa, what's going it? on?" Like it was blatant queer baiting. Okay, it was fine. yeah. All right, uh, Joe. Sure. Uh, I was just gonna say it can't be you can't have characters that are fungible. So like queer baiting happens as far as I'm concerned when the creators are like, "Oh, and by the way." This character is queer, so you might have some of your experiences represented on screen. But if you have a character that, for all intents and purposes, is straight, other than by the way that they're they're identifying publicly in, in advertising, and if you have setups like even here in Australia, our like oh god, um, the the Bachelor on the Island, whatever that is, the Bachelor where they Bachelor go Bachelor in Paradise. Yeah, Bachelor in Paradise. They cut the ad so that it looked like these two girls are hooking up in the ocean so then you were like fuck okay cool i'm gonna watch it because i want to see these two girls get together i'm so excited and then that never happens and it's the same thing with tv it's like it's all well and good it's like when jk rowling is like oh by the way dumbledore's gay um it doesn't matter unless you're actually going to commit to telling that story it's the same with like having you, you don't just like especially now when we're so focused on diversity returned, it is so easy to let writers off the hook by having them sit down and be like oh well, this character is black, we just didn't mention it, or this character has a disability. And the issue with queer baiting is that they'll tell you characters are queer and make you think you're going to get no. represented, and then you tune in and watch, and you either get one episode and then someone dies, or you never get anything meaningful at all. Yep. And it's, it's, it's true. shit. It's true. It's Trix, shit. I want to go to Trix, but then I want, I want us to do something to make us feel better. I want us to go around and say our favorite piece of representation of whatever we identify. Against Joe, um, the definitely queer baiting is not this character's gay, but we're not going to do anything with that. Queer baiting, like the literal definition, is where they hint at but then do not actually depict same sex romance or other LGBTQ mm. characters. So, okay. even like saying, Hey, that character's gay, that's not queer baiting because it's been confirmed. Queer baiting is like this character. Oh, might have a thing. Who knows? And then they play that up for four seasons to get people to watch it and wait for it. Yeah. And then they yeah, just yeah, okay, okay. I always yeah, forget. Yeah, it here's here's a scene together. where the guy who isn't interested in the other guy is hallucinating about Ooh. the guy who is totally not in love with seeing him a romantic song, like. And then it was like, oh, he doesn't like him, and it's like, wait, what the fuck is going on? Okay, but, um, what do you guys think? Like, no, 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 no. I think what's not. Go ahead. I just want to ask a question for anyone who's watched it. Where do we think Killing Eve falls on this scale? Beautiful. Because, watch it. because I, I feel like it's season. super queer, and yet they're technically, I mean, like, I don't know if a psychopath can have 
a meaningful Are you up to date? romantic con- yeah i'm completely up to date i know i know that's not such a, but it's still sort of like in the air right like i don't know it's anyway. not okay <laughs> so what is that she's a psychopath <laughs> sorry okay. they can still have gay relationships can still have be um, gay sexual attraction so yeah, I just, more gay psychopaths have sex too yeah, yeah so- i want more i want more gay representation in my psychopathy please <laughs> yes I, I i haven't seen the show i would just say that like i, I don't think um I, I from from what from what tricks said what queer baiting is it doesn't sound like that's what uh gotham is right you're saying unless you're saying that like they're specifically okay. saying that Ed even if, it, if it's was, not like queer baiting right it's closing still the polls early bad gina that's illegal oh, okay you can say Voter that. tampering right, fair enough okay all right it's still, okay it, um, it, it is queer baiting in a sense of like it's baiting uh even though one of them is confirmed gay the other one is being hinted at as if they're going to be in a relationship so that's that's baiting okay all right yeah. um so i want to go around and do our favorite piece of representation of gay people of color or whatever, anything you like in, in TV shows, and we can have a little discussion on that. Um, Maya, start with you. I was going to start with Tony, but you're not here. <laughs> um, once again, me losing the shift button that I use every single time. Stop the count, myself. Stop the um, count. Start I the count again. was like, oh, I'm going to stick with the Jewish one, and I'm trying to think of a non holocausty one that was good, and I can't, so I'm just going to go with the pianist, and um, yeah. The pianist, uh, Adrian Brody, who's the, the, the man who played it and the character, um, the rest of the time, Jews are always, they're half Jewish and it's not really mentioned, or they're half Jew- Jewish and only Hanukkah is mentioned. And Hanukkah is not a major Jewish holiday. It's one of the major ones, but it's no, not the most important one. Um, Maisel, someone say Maisel. Yeah, the marvellous Maisel. Maisel. I, think mean. yeah. I haven't seen that, um, but I, I'd say that just because it was a well-written character. Um, but once again, it was Holocausty. It'd be nice to have some non-Holocaust ones, but you know, get what you're given. Um, Tony, I'll go back to you. I was going to start with you, but you're not. You weren't here. Uh, so, just your favorite piece of uh, representation in media. Now that you've got. I'm sorry. I really, I really have to go to the bathroom real bad, so I, I okay. ran again. <laughs> um, I can't think of any like contemporary. This is obviously going to be contemporary, but I can't think of anything like really like recent within like 2020, 2015. So I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with uh, what's her face from from next door in the Boondocks. That's what I'm gonna go with the little light skinned gal with the curly hair. I I just feel like she's just the younger embodiment of who I am now, just like kind of oblivious and naive and scared all the time, and really just stuck in the middle of a lot of bullshit. That's that's my favorite I think representation. My right gay now. representation, or is it just representation in general? I don't... Representation of like any minority. Oh, okay. All right. Of yeah. any minority. All right. Well, come back to me. I gotta rethink my answer. I got <laughs> I'm scared. You mean that wait, but we know why. <laughs> okay, we can come back to you, babe. Joe. Um ooh, so I really liked in terms of movies, I liked Book Smart and I liked um Portrait of a Lady on Fire, obviously. And I like Life Partners, which is a Leighton Meester and uh, Gillian Jacobs film. Um, I thought they were all great uh, representative pieces. And I, I, she's bad. She's not good representation. But my heart always goes for Kalinda Sharma in The Good Wife. Uh, huge fan of that character, even though it doesn't end well for her. <laughs> I could tell you that. Uh, can, you know? Yeah, can I just specify. I said pianist. It's yeah, uh, yeah don't worry. Say penis. The pronunciation's <laughs> dropped to penis. I didn't say penis. <laughs> yeah, so I yeah. Uh, thanks for the clarification there, Maya. Um, Denims. Um, so I think I want to go in a different direction, which is like children's animation, uh, which you don't really see it as often because it's like you're perversing our children. We're gonna shove home like heterosexuality down everyone's throat, but homosexuality is is deviant and all this other shit so i think steam universe does a really good job um obviously like besides uh ruby and sapphire i think that the pearl arc is really good i love it all around um and then i think uh, another category that we don't see often is it's because i think lesbian relationships are a little bit fetishized it's easier for male viewers to watch right so it's very hard to find good um homosexual relationships between two men in media that doesn't feel like 
weird. Like that doesn't feel like, oh, look, one of them is like, like fucking absolutely flamboyant just for no reason. When like in reality, like there's plenty of like homosexual couples that aren't like that. So I think one really good one was um, Sense Eight. I thought that the I thought uh, that the, the the gay relationship there was it was like I really liked it. It was really good. It made me really happy when I would watch it. You beat me! Ah, oh, goddamn! That was a really good one. <laughs> I love that show. Um, yeah, Demon Mama. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with the one I brought up before. Uh, Marceline and and Princess Bubblegum are are really really good. Um, I I find uh good trans representation to be really 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 difficult in media that's. Um, not made by trans people, and therefore, if it's made by trans people, chances are it's not really mainstream. But if uh, I could say that The Matrix is a pretty interesting trans narrative, though people don't recognize it as that. Again, it's so hidden that like most people will ar- literally argue about it. But wasn't it yeah. written by trans women? Yeah, it was. Yep, it was. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, I think they did a. I think there's a lot of parallels there that can be seen. I think there's other media that does it, but it's very, very rare to find like an openly trans character in any major piece of media. It's pretty rare. So yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Trick. Uh, I've been frantically Googling because I genuinely cannot think of a single character that has ADHD that is like actually stated explicitly versus me projecting myself onto them. Mm -hmm. Like, are they, or am I just uh, putting myself into them? But I would say, um, just in terms of like ADHD, I'd say Gwenpool from the comics. She's not, it's not explicit, but it is so like. Oh, I probably will do that. Well I don't know if that counts. Yeah, we could do that. That would be cool. Uh, yeah, Prime. Yeah. Um, Unus from Unus Arnis, actually. Canon ADHD. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really keep track of these things. I mean, when I see a, a good character, it's like, oh, I mean, that, that's cool. Like, you know, it's like not a shit representation like of black people, you know, um, that's great. Um, so I, I guess I'll I'll just have to use comic yeah, characters. Um, uh, I guess there's three. There's Storm oh, no. um, from the X-Men. Um, there's uh, Miles Morales, uh, who's the new Spider-Man. It was a good one, right? Yeah. Such a That's good bullshit. one. How that was I mine. That I, I tap out. Oh, I was going to go with that one. I, no, I quit. So. It was yeah. really good. Oh, mine. Never mind. <laughs> I'll come back over here. I don't have any. There's also uh, uh, John Stewart um, from um, DC, Green Lantern. Uh, he's a, a, a black Green Lantern uh, there. And uh, he's like, he gets the positions of command. He's like, a full human being with like interesting True. backstory uh, and like you know emotions and crap. That's cool. Um, so yeah, that's that. Yeah. Um, yep. True. So uh, Nekapara has great cat girl representation. Um, we stand. <laughs> <laughs> it sure does. Why um, is Nekapara loved by so many people? It's so good. Because it's <laughs> amazing. Because is, it is so fluffy and great. And whenever you're feeling sad. Watching some cat girls serving some cake and being that, like, "Oh, I like dropped the him. cake!" is incredible. Oh. Uh, um. Anyway, on to actual answers. Um. So Wentworth here in Australia, it's a um a, a prison drama about like a female prison, and they are so uh the way they've had two uh trans characters. One of them is on right now, and she's non-binary in, in real life. Um. And I said she because of the characters. Uh, pronouns but the the actor is uh they them pronoun um but they um they did such a good job uh with with uh the way they represent um h- how sexuality can be so fluid and how getting into certain situations like they had one character who was like oh i was straight and now i'm gonna be stuck here forever and i'm feeling attraction to other people because this is my whole life now and like actually explaining how sexual relations can come out of like people's like circumstances, um, which I really really enjoyed, and I feel like they've done a really great job of it. And um, uh, has anyone does anyone know what moral oral is? Yeah. Uh, hell yeah. Um, I don't feel like I can say literally anything about it without spoiling everything. Really fucked um, up. <laughs> Yeah, but it's but the first season is just like a kids show, and then it's like all of the undertones are like everything here is really holy shit. It's so I, crazy. I yeah. implore you 
to watch Mauro Aro. Everyone oh, here. I've heard. I've heard Mauro. Oh my god! Really good. I haven't seen stick, it though. Stick with it. There's yeah. like there is a sharp turning point in this show. Yeah. Um, please. Yeah, a lot of Twitch streamers um, have ADHD. But they have yep. representation in there. I know so like, many Twitch streamers um, with ADHD. It shows how uh, people in those situations can, um, minorities in those situations, are like conflicted with. I've heard really good things about and it. with their circumstances of their political agenda and the places that they live. Um, so I feel like Seems so, <laughs> yeah, moral oral is horrifying and it's brilliant. Yeah. That's that's why it's so good. <laughs> but it's it, not horrifying, it's cute and it's claymation. Um there are three <laughs> sidetracking here for a second, there are three types of Welcome reviews back, for moral Academy. oral. And one of them is people going, Holy shit, this show is so good. The other one is people going, This is really good, you should watch it with your kids. It's a really good show, you should watch it with your kids. It's a good kids show. And then the other ones are people going, Why the fuck did you tell me to watch this with my kids? My kids are traumatized. And it's brilliant. Watch it. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna second and third that. Holy crap, guys. Moral oral. Uh, if you haven't watched this thing, the first uh, uh, few episodes, you're like, what is this? Why Bill am I watching? Has a lot this of gems. is boring. This is what I thought when I first watched it many, many years ago, right? Um, but then there is there's a moment, and it, and it just gets darker. <laughs> you gotta yeah. stick with it. It's amazing. Yeah, watching with your kids. <laughs> knowing what happens later on and knowing that it gets darker, watching those first few episodes, it even has that undertone of like something is wrong. Yeah. This isn't right. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's good. Um. And I feel like they do great uh, representation yeah, yeah, yeah. of people in situations where they um they aren't Moral allowed Oral. to be what they are. It's like this. Um, the character's name is Oral. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Wentworth is great. That's great. Um, yeah, I welcome. love this. Thank you for that roundtable of awesome representation. I'm feeling very happy now. I think that us. We j I just recently watched us. I, us is a good representation of a black family. There you go. Nice. Nice. I've never seen it. I've heard good things, but I've never seen it. Good. Very much watch that movie. It's very good. What movie? It's Us by Jordan Peele. He's the director uh -huh. and writer. Really and good. Oh, I Jordan saw Peele. Us. Yeah, that was that horror very movie, good. right? Mm-hmm. It was more of a thriller, but yeah. It was good. It was good. Spooky movie. I was thinking of This Is Us. Um, I haven't seen that either. I haven't seen any of these things. But yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, Speaking about generalize it uh, not generalization us is good oh my brain's gone blank um representation? representation thank you so much sorry in in shows mash for a seven seven will forever be my favorite program um it's that really old one from the yeah. 70s yeah. ancient yeah. ancient yeah. but like i hate the for its time but it had like there was George, who was a side character, who was gay, and no one was bothered. No one, it wasn't like, it was, would would I want it to be made now? No, I think it does deserve to be criticised, but I, the, the representation of that was incredible. I will live by that being up there. And I think it was, it was a good representation for, um, I'm not, like, big pro-military, but, um, for like soldiers, because that's how that's the 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 psyche that it captured, and how it is one of the most accurate films, like that, excluding stuff like uh, Korengal, which was a, a documentary, um, that captured the realities and the brutality and the swaying from good. And I'm not, I do not support what they were doing, but it was, yeah. Um, I, so I just want to thank, and I'm sorry, I completely missed this, uh, uh, Excessive Observer. Um, I hope you're still here. I apologize for gifting 500 bits. I, I, I missed that. But, uh, they said to you, you all, um, uh, loving this panel and conversation. Thanks for doing it. So, uh, a lot of people really like this topic. Uh, yeah. So, uh, thank you, uh, Kat, for uh, coming up with it. Oh, Philadelphia is a great movie. Um, just as Classic. a side bit as well in terms of representation, um, it is incredibly frustrating that the only representation for, like, non-binary people and asexual people is, oh, God. like, it's either, it's either, like, robot or alien. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. That's it's, it. Yeah. 
It's like how they were like. Um... Oh, wait, wait. There was one good representation of an asexual person. Um, I know one. Wow. But like uh, Bojack Horseman, the dude with the blue hair. What was his name? The main character. The main yeah. character. I, yeah, I know the yeah. guy you're talking about. I thought that that was pretty decent representation. He definitely wasn't a robot or an alien. So I haven't seen. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, got yeah, it. Well, yeah, I thought they did They did his arc pretty well, and, like, he basically hits it off with this female friend of his, and she's just like, are you, like, am I, like, ugly, or, like, Todd, what's yeah. up? Like, you don't want to, like, do anything with me? And he's like, Spun I think Bob. I'm just asexual. I just don't. I really like you, and I love spending time with you, and all this other stuff. I just don't want to do anything, you know? So I thought that they handled that pretty well. I don't like Bojack, well. but... Todd, like yes, it. that's his name. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like... I haven't seen that, but I feel like I've definitely the uh, representation of um, I don't know about non-binary well, I like people. Parvati. I don't think I've seen any representation of non-binary people that I can think of off the top of my head. But uh, all asexual people I've seen are either like yeah, they're they're robots like fucking Sherlock Holmes who was just like emotions. What is that? <laughs> and then or they're like um, yeah, like aliens or they're fucking children. Like how. They were like, "Oh, SpongeBob is asexual. Isn't SpongeBob like? I know he's an adult in the in the show. It's a kids' show, and he's supposed to represent like the kids that are watching the show, being like carefree and he's thirty four. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but he like there's there's no romance anywhere in that show. No, there it's, isn't. It doesn't make sense to call a character in that show asexual. It just doesn't." Yeah, there's like that one thing with Mr. Krabs and the uh, Mrs. Puff, and then that was it. And like, I feel like nothing in this show. I've heard is of Tuco and Birdie. I've heard none it's of good. the characters are like, espe- like especially like it's. It was weird. I feel like we need more representation of people like that who, um, like you said with Bojack. Plankton Holtzman, has a wife like, who's a robot. Like, oh too. yeah, I feel like I just don't feel that. And that's fine. And then they have Neil like Bream. normal relationship oh with God. people. Yeah. And it's not like it's that's not like amazing. every single relationship that they have is like, I'm supposed to care about you. Like it is with Sherlock. Yeah. It, Sherlock Maybe. is not a good example for the. No, it's really bad. It's a good. Also, Sheldon a, It's a good example of a bad representation. But also, yeah, no, Sheldon's not asexual. He was like. He was originally, I think, but then his girlfriend, like, convinced him or something. I don't follow (laughs) that show, it's for straights. But, um, the only (laughs) show that I can think of that that, that genuinely has, like, representation of every single thing imaginable, even though looking back on it now, it is terrible, but I grew up with it, Glee. Glee did so much for us, and we were just like, ugh. Stupid little show about singing. Yes, it was, and it was brilliant. It had, like, three different trans characters, one of which was non-binary. It had, like, seven different queer relationships. It had, like, literally everything. It had so many, like, disabled people, mentally ill characters. Like, it... Like, look back on it now. Some of it, most of it, all of it is really, really cringe. But, like, I don't know. Even, like... If it's, like, bad to, like, people who know better, but, like, for me in, like, grade five, I was, like, oh, my God, Brittany and Santana, lesbians. Like, it was, like, sometimes representation doesn't have to be perfect to be meaningful. Yeah, Maybe. that's so unfair. Yeah, nothing's 100%. perfect. I think we can always look at media and nothing's critique perfect. and say, this particular thing should have been better, this should have been better. But it doesn't mean, like, okay, remove this because it's so bad. It's, like, no. I'm I'm grateful that we have this, but we can we can always we can always like improve the standard. I think um also now is a good time to talk about representation in terms of um the absolute pit that is Sia. Oh, I researched for years to write this autistic. Ca- she wrote um an autistic um nonverbal character. Great, there is a need for representation of autism in women, in girls, and especially non-verbal autistic people, but who still communicate and aren't, like, pushed aside and, 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 and infantilized and, yeah. But the way that she did it, she was like, oh, you know, I researched for, like, three years, and then she teamed with Autism Speaks, which is a hate group. It's, it's a fucking hate group. Um, It's <sighs> disgusting. I'm, uh, mm-hmm, yep, yes. True. Um, 
true it Teams is. with Autumn Speaks has recently reposted stuff by Autumn Speaks and was like, well, I didn't know. It still hasn't deleted the tweet. Having a go at Autumn people who called her out because the trailer is shit. It's shit. It's that stereotypical, oh my goodness, look how brave this autistic girl is. It's like, stop calling disabled people brave. It's it's not helpful. It's not brave. There's nothing. There's, um, I just, it's making me want to scream. And <laughs> the way that I she feel was you. like, I oh, feel well, you. you know, I based this character off someone I knew at AA, like Alcoholics Anonymous, which is not, that's not the issue, but it, it's just that, like, I guarantee she did not ask that. It was a child, that child's parents. And it's just like, you can't base an autistic character around someone you once met. It's, it's, neurotypical people will never, even if you're a psychologist, you'll never understand what it's like living as an mm. autistic person. You will never. I won't, I won't, my siblings will, but I will never. And I, I would never, it's, it's inappropriate for Sia to write an autistic character and then cast do absolutely shockingly crappy research team with a mm. hate group having mm. a go at people on twitter like ridiculously it was like oh you haven't even seen the film girl it's like just calm down yeah the film's really that good you don't need to defend it when it comes film, out right? people will realize and be like oh, i'm so sorry see it was really good like just fucking wait if it's that good it's because you uh, know it's shit it's that uh, and i believe the she... quote was fuckity fuck why won't you guys shut up and watch the movie <laughs> Yes, um, that is it. I, um, I wanted to comment on this just because um, I feel like Sia was I, the, the way she went about this was really fucking stupid. Like, as you said, she was trying to base it off someone that she knew, and it was she said like, "Oh, the Holy person shit. who I'm basing it Mother off mistress, of, they're non-verbal and they are whatever, and it would have been so stressful to hire an autistic person like that person." And it's like, hang on, you don't need to hire an autistic person who has the same like um like symptoms of autism as the person you're trying to represent in the movie you could have hired a a perfectly like normal like autistic actor who doesn't have all these other things and they could act and do those things like you're the person who the neurotypical person who you've hired doesn't have these things and they can act and do those things you didn't need to hire someone to pretend to have autism you can hire someone to act out symptoms that they don't have but they still are autistic it's uh and she she called like autistic people bad actors as well i think she was just like uh, yeah maybe it's because you're a bad actor like uh joe and the thing but is also if you're saying that it is too hard to hire and work with an autistic actor then maybe you shouldn't be making this film maybe you're not the person to make the fucking film because it's not too hard because people with disabilities with autism make art every autism speaks day is a very bad group make it work so if you can't if you don't have the resources to tell the story properly don't tell the story hmm. exactly and like if you're not going if you're if you're going to she's going to profit directly profit of this autism of this story of autism i can, yeah? I can talk about it afterwards then if you fucking want to. do it right Fucking but do people it should right. tell you in chat. They probably well, know I've more than me. Well, I've got a autistic. Pe oh, what was it? I've got. This isn't like verbatim, but it was. Yeah, I've, um, I've got there's like however seven amount of people neuro. On the film. Yeah, neuro atypical. You're looking for fucking neurodivergent, but of neurodiverse people on the film, and and I think she also mentioned trans people and went. And none of them are drug addicts, and none of them are sex workers. Like, oh, no. great! I don't give a. F that does not. It, that I does just want to let like you all know I don't acting. have sex workers working on the film. I hate sex workers. Or drug addicts. I think drug yes. addicts are kind of gross and useless. And don't worry. Even though they're I met on the, the even though I met my muse at an Addicts Anonymous, I'm gonna. <laughs> Jesus fucking Wow. Christ. Um, oh. It's so bad, and it makes me want to scream. That's so and rotten. I'm it. Oh yes, and it's that whole. It is literally. It is literally. Fucking. It is a porno yep. for neurotypical people. It's that. Oh my goodness! Look at that little autistic girl. She's. Oh, she's talking. Oh my goodness! She's so. She listens to music. This neurotypical person swoops in, saves the day, even though she's already fucking called music. She's called music, and then he's like, this person's like, well, maybe if she listened to music, it might help, and then suddenly she's singing, and you go into her brain, and what is it? Obviously, everyone's symptoms of autism are completely different. It's a fucking spectrum. 
um, an autistic spectrum, neurotypical people aren't on the autistic spectrum, but um, inside her brain, what is it? Super bright colours, lots of different noises, lots of different distracting things that I can guarantee would overstimulate any of my siblings, mm -hmm. any of them. And it's so overstimulating that it makes my brain physically hurt and I'm not autistic and it's just like I none of it was appropriate and then when people are calling you out going look I'm an autistic actor and I would a lot of uh, me and other neurodiverse and autistic people and actors would have been happy to help you sure. maybe you're just a bad actor maybe you're just a shitty person who's trying to profit off the lives of disabled people without actually fucking helping us that's not what we need we also have the really stupid fucking uh, like rain man and um shit and like atypical the best is the best that you so i realize i'm talking really fucking fast atypical is like the best you have and it's still not great it still isn't mm. great and it's like that's not the autistic representation you need maybe you should try humanizing people and not infantilizing mm. them and not making this fucking inspiration porn i mean this is something yeah, that happens I... with trans representation a lot too um there are an incredible amount of and, and this is where i i i you know said in the beginning i think representation is is such an important thing to talk about um because it's not just about screen time representation either you know it's like we have this whole problem where there's just there's so many talented trans people um and they don't get jobs they're not given jobs they're not given those writing positions where they could write that story it's given to someone who's being like i will advocate and it's like but there's literally a line out the door of skilled trans people who could be doing that thing. And I see this happen with a number of different uh, groups. You know what I mean? Like, this is something that has ha that happens seemingly all over the place, especially in Hollywood. I think it's particularly bad, but... Yeah, I, um, I wanted to comment on one thing that Maya said, and then I do want to do the second topic because I know Joe was excited for it. Um, it as much... Um as I love no, the natural flow of discussion yeah, that we terrible, have, Sumner. I do want to move on to the next topic at some point. Um, yeah, so uh, my said something about uh, calling like uh, disabled people brave, and as like someone who has a like an Chibay autoimmune fatty, oh condition, god. oh my god, I hate it. And like as like something that like it affects what I eat. Like, I will eat something, and people will be like, that's so brave of you. And it's like, no, I'm eating a sandwich. Um, like, yeah, I could be in a lot of pain later, and it's pretty dangerous, but, like, I'm eating a sandwich. Uh, I'm not fucking skydiving right now. Like, I, I'm, like, this is my life, you know what I mean? Like, everything, oh, my gosh, I hate it so much. Like, I, I remember drinking once with one of my, like, older, like, friend i'm not friends with this person anymore but i would like drink a vodka like like a, just like vodka and ice and they would be like wow that's so brave of you and it's like i'm not brave i'm like drunk this is stop it like oh when i had to get my legs reconstructed and i would like go to cafes or i would like cross a road and people would be like that's so brave of you. no i'm I'm literally just walking with like crutches, and it's it oh feels my god, very infantilizing. It what? is. It's like I'm not. I'm. It, this isn't like. I can't even explain it. And I feel like they do the exact same thing with um, trans representation, where they can just be like, "Oh my gosh, you identify as a woman. That's so brave." And it's like. I've what? had well-meaning doctors literally say that to me. Like like doctors. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm liter I'm literally not kidding you. Like it's it's infuriating. I've had like a surgeon uh, like a nurse while I was go about to go under for surgery be like, "Oh, so wait, are you trans?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And it's like, "Oh, so like did you change your name and stuff?" I'm like, "Yeah, it was annoying." And they're like, "Oh, that's so brave of you." I'm just like, "Okay, thanks. Uh, can you put me under for surgery now?" <laughs> like <laughs> Okay, thanks. Knock me out now, please. Yeah. Anything. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I understand that some people it comes from like a well-meaning place, but it really is kind of like infantilizing. There was a saying that I had a that that someone told me recently of like like society decides uh society decides who's disabled and who's not based on how we build our society. Um, like for example, like we choose to put stairs everywhere instead of other things. There are other solutions, but we've just chosen to put stairs everywhere for one reason or another. Maybe it's cheaper. Maybe it's just, you know, considered a norm. Um, but that goes for a lot of things. Like, like, I mean, um, 
I would argue that like uh, the school system is is designed in such a way that makes um, autism and ADHD uh, disabilities, even though it doesn't have to be designed that way. It really doesn't. Um, and like, you know, so that's that's something that I think that is is one thing that I wish I wish instead of people being, oh, you're so brave for grappling with these systems that we've mm -hmm. built to be hostile to you and have been ignoring your pleas to stop building hostile systems. Like maybe we could just not build hostile systems that actually would probably work really well for other people as well who might not be openly identified as uh, dis disabled or whatever. Yeah, I feel like the the bar for being brave as a disabled person is just like existing. Like I posted mm -hmm. a like a uh, a photo on um like Facebook the other day of like me in a bikini. Hey, I'm glad you like that. And right? you could see the scars on my legs from when I got them reconstructed, and I got like a message from like one of my uncles or something who were just like it, I think it was my aunt actually, um and she was just like oh yeah you're you're so brave for posting that photo and it's like i didn't even see the scars in the photo True. when i took it this is my legs i'm brave for having, having legs. legs like fuck off i didn't e and now every time i look at that photo all i see is the massive scar on my fucking thigh it is. Yeah, my, it is. i wasn't that even Anton thinking chick, about I it agree before with you. i wasn't being brave i was just being me because that's what i look like and it's, it would be like if you had someone who had a big nose and every time oh, they no. like went out in public, you were like, that's so brave of you for existing with a big nose. Because I think it's an unattractive trait. Like what you just told me is that you think that my scars are unattractive and that I'm brave for existing with an unattractive quality. Like it's stupid and it's insulting. Mm. And it's like, they think they're complimenting. I want to go to, to Joe and then Maya and then I, I will read out the next topic. Okay, I actually think there's a really good point that you make in there that can transition us to the next topic as well, which is when people on Twitter started calling, I think it was Billie Eilish, brave for walking around with a normal body. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shocking. Um, but. But, disgusting, but we can get to that. But also, just in terms of, like, how interesting it is to, like, yeah, that's how they who sound, plays what Samalski. role, et cetera. Yeah, I agree. Uh, in Australia, we have the Sydney Festival, uh, and they really position Don't forget to join chat, the YouTube. Forefront festival for YouTubers, the join my website, demonmama.com. Hedwig and the Angry Itch, and they cast the cisgendered exactly, uh, actor Hugh Sheridan, who is a box office star here, but is cisgendered. Um, and my friend Zoe wrote a petition, and pretty much everyone in the arts industry signed it. And so their petition ended up getting Hugh, they're, re re they're reconsidering their casting. And in the letter um, that Zoe wrote in terms of like calling it out, she, they were very clear that, um, that Hugh Sheridan wasn't the person, like Hugh Sheridan shouldn't have accepted the role, but they were like, it's not, it's not up for question that Hugh Sheridan is a talented actor. That's not what we're saying. What we want you to investigate is the power structures within the Sydney Festival that allowed for him to be cast in the first place. When you're an organisation that says you're committed to diversity and authentic representation and you're meant to be at the forefront of arts in Australia, what systems, what employees, what rigorous processes do you have in place that allowed you yeah, to that's announce fair the production of Hedwig and the Angry Itch with a cisgendered actor in the leading role? And so public pressure actually did turn around and that role is being reconsidered now. And Hugh Sheridan has lost that job. He's kicking and screaming about it, which is really unfortunate. He should have gone with Grace. But um, yeah, I just think it is. I don't know why the bot got you for that. that. Like, oh, it's so Thank bad you, that, that actors accepted that role because actors do have a responsibility. But there are so many people and so many processes that go into casting. What, who do we have in those roles as well that are Deeply. allowing these things to slip through? I, I wanted to say really quickly as well, that same play, uh, Michael C. Hall played it in the Broadway play here, and basically nobody threw a fit, right? No, or at least I wasn't privy to sp seeing people throw a fit. And yes, he's a great actor, you know what I mean? I, I'm not going to deny this, and I'm sure that he did a good job, but like, can we do better? I feel like True, we can Gina. do better. I feel like we can do better. Like you're in the same way that when, what was it? Gina, was it Ghost you're in the Shell? Worker. What was that Shut lady? Yeah, oh, Scarlett's God. done this. Scarlett has done no. this five times now. Mm -hmm. Dude, like that was like, like I people. am a butch. I'm a butch lesbian. I'm, I'm also a trans man. <laughs> I'm, I'm also Asian, Asian, by the way. I'm actually Japanese now. I'm also playing Gandhi in the biopic. <laughs> to like, it's I'm just... cringing. Stop. I've seen people like Photoshop her to have like a bald head, and then they're like, "Look, she's actually <laughs> oh, playing Avatar from the Last Airbender." You now. do a good job. It's like, 
like there can just only be it's one really, head mod right now. At a so certain point, it's really like uh, Jesus Christ. And and the thing that's frustrating about it is these are like actors that are like multimillionaires, right? Like they don't need to take these roles, right? Like I can understand like an upcoming like actor and this is a really huge role for them and this this might be their like make or break it, right? I understand that. Being an actor is really hard. Yeah. If absolutely. you're trying to become one, right? But like these are like multi million fucking they already have their wealth. They already are established as being amazing actors, you know what I mean? And this is when it gets selfish, right? Because people like Scarlett are looking for the role that can get them the award. Where, oh, wow, you were so transformative. Like, oh, my God, you were unrecognizable going through the trauma of a trans person. It was so emotional. And it's like, God, so that person's allowed to, like, have this laudable performance. And yet you shit on the actual people around you every day. That's great. Amazing. Yes. I can see Demon Mama going through it. <laughs> <laughs> I could scream about it all day. I swear to God. I just wanted to let everyone and have their peace because while we're, while, I feel like this, I feel like we've naturally transitioned into the next topic. So I'm going to read it out and then we kind of, I, I do love this though. This is what I kind of envisioned for Amazon Lily when we first started, that it would be us being like, here's a topic and here's yeah, all I of the other I things that we want to talk camera. about. Sorry, all of the yeah, sidetracks and all of the great stuff that we all love talking about um, to come transition. along with it. So True. thank you guys so much for all of this. Okay. Women on Twitch uh, may have the opportunity to grow if they present a more sexualized image. However, this also op opens up to harassment. Uh, women on Twitch or other social media trapped in a paradox that demands that they sexualize themselves, but also punishes them for doing so. Or to protect themselves, is it as simple as women rejecting that choice and presenting a more conservative image? Do you think women who present a sexual persona have an unfair advantage over those who don't? It could be. Um, Joe, I want but you to But then people don't know it's my open. stream. We aren't going to do opening statements or anything. I feel like we can get around. Yeah. Okay, I think um, I've got two strains of thought on this. First of all, there's my brain as an academic that immediately goes to um, objectification. And it's funny, I was streaming yesterday about Martha Nussbaum, and she really um, wrote some groundwork and stuff, an essay called Sexual Objectification, which basically looks at the different ways that you can be dehumanized, your agency can be taken away, your interests can be taken away, you are fungible, you are someone who has no experiences or feelings or desires, you are there for the service of others. And then um, solipsism, who did that? Um, Ray Langston built on that, saying that objectification also silences and reduces you to appearance. So for me, this sort of uh, issue is a, a, an interaction between objectification and male entitlement, which means that you're an object there to pleasure other people or for other people to consume, which is when this gets confusing because we are creating content for, con for consumption. Um, so where's the line between you and what you create? Um, but also then if you don't give men, <laughs> just to make a general statement, uh, what they feel entitled to, there can be backlash. Um, but from the personal side of this, I don't think it's it's just Twitch either. Like there, I'm in very diverse industries, and there's not a single place where I don't face this issue. As an academic, if I dress up, I'm resting on pretty, and I'm probably an idiot. But if I dress down, I'm unprofessional. As a comedian, I'm not funny. I'm just trying to be sexy and kick up on stage if I dress up. But if I dress down, I'm trying to be one of the boys. Um, so like, there's no. It doesn't matter what industry I'm in. Uh, I'm criticized either way. Um, so I, I think it's really, and like, to be honest, I, I, I'm not trying to like toot my own horn or anything. It doesn't take much for people to sexualize you when you're a woman. Like can I can literally too, be in a baggy t-shirt and have my hair in a bun, have no makeup. And people are like, why is she like wearing a men's t-shirt? Is she trying to suggest something? Or if I eat on stream, it's like, why is she bringing attention to her mouth? It's like, it doesn't matter what you do. Remember, you're we're going to do more stuff so, afterwards. Uh, even so much as like people sorry to interrupt you just very quickly no, please people do. people who like walk away from their stream like i need water i'm oh thirsty i need water i promise you you want to show off your body there you're are, showing there off are. your ass to these 14 yeah. year olds on the internet and it's like i just want water bro <laughs> yeah. yeah there there are women on twitch who will turn off their webcam if they ever get up out of their chair that's um, what i just did before because i had to go and grab something i'm not i'm not having it on yeah, see, I feel like um, I want to make a 
a distinction between sexualization and objectification because I feel like mm-hmm. sexualization is something that you do to yourself. You're like, I am choosing to be sexual in this moment. I am sexualizing myself. And then objectification is when someone does that to you and are viewing you as a sexual object, even if you don't uh, want them to, or if you're not doing anything that um, regards them that way. Like if you are like, I don't know, doing a porn right now um, and acting sexy, like that is you being sexual and being sexual Mm. is okay. Um, Mm -hmm. And I I feel like there's a difference between that. And I'm I'm not saying that you don't know that difference, Joe. No, 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 no. No, I, I think it's a really important clarification. And I would say Must Martha thirsty Nussbaum's as fuck. sexual objectification, so she's talking about sexual True, objectification specifically, she doesn't put any moral quality in that. So you can there yeah. can be good things that come out of sexual objectification. Um, people like Catherine McKinnon, who also write on sexual objectification, are, are very moral about it because they say it's something that's oppo- imposed on you, whereas um, Martha Nussbaum doesn't say whether it's you doing it or someone else doing it. And she's clear about sexual objectification i think it's important to also say that objectification can occur outside of sexual relationships like yeah uh, the objectification but if we, if, of i feel like we're talking things. specifically about sexual yeah but just yeah. like since we're drawing those lines about like the different and clarification of terms yeah um i think um, that's important I, yeah I think and I, like... I definitely i wanted to relate to you joe for a second when you were talking about like whatever you do it's like you're putting if, if people are going to be like you're putting in a show for whatever reason like you're trying to be one of the boys or whatever um i definitely felt that when i first joined twitch i remember people being like uh like i remember thinking very lowly of women who would have their like who would wear a like a low cut top on stream and i would be like i would never be a titty streamer I want people to watch me for my personality. This was before, like, I was a decent human, apparently. Um, We live for growth, okay? Yeah, and I I was... It took me, like, a week, I think, to realize how fucking insane that was. It's a new voting channel. From the day that I had that thought of, like, this is a bad thing, that women Mm. are doing this, and and it's their fault that whenever I stream, people are going to say the word boobs in my chat. Like, it, fuck these women. Like, it was so, I was so angry. And I think that, like, I, I, I wanted to be one of the boys. I think that was, like, a big mm. thing. It was, like, I want to be, I, I want to wear a t-shirt and I don't want to, I don't want to look cute on stream. And yes, I'm going to wear makeup every single stream. But that has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> and, and, like, mm-hmm. it was really damaging. And I feel like it took me a second. And I'm I'm at the point now where it's like I will post photos in a bikini on Twitter and I will look hot. And you know what? I will still destroy you in an intellectual political debate because <laughs> I am smart as well. And I feel like that's a barrier that I really enjoy is that it's like, yeah, I'm really hot. And yeah, I'm gonna destroy you while you're drooling at my tits. Like it's brilliant, and I love it. Um, but I feel like we, I feel like it, we need to, because of I, I know what it's like to have that feeling. We need to be okay with women being sexual and being like, um, like we need because i know i know i was thinking lowly of these women i was like these mm. these women aren't talented they just have boobs and then it's like well, they have content on top of that as well and it's my fault mm. for looking at them and going oh my god boobs like that's on me and, and them ca- being sexual is their prerogative and it's my fault for objectifying them cat i think it's really interesting because it's like also like this is the thing about objectification that i find like I'm a human being, so, like, sometimes I put on makeup for a stream because I'm self-conscious and I don't feel good about myself and I feel insecure and doing that makes me feel okay. And it's, like, not that I'm doing it for anyone else. And this is what objectification does. You talk about that after if you want to. Oh, well, you must be doing that for me. The boobs you grew on your chest, those are definitely for me and you definitely created those for me to enjoy. It's, like, I can't... I can't... and, And, like, while I do get the fun of it on Twitch sometimes like overcoming that boundary I think that's something I struggle with a bit more because it's like something I deal with at like 
political science conferences where people won't take what I'm saying seriously. Like all white men will not listen to what I'm saying because of the way that I look. They'll just literally turn their ears off. Uh, I denims. To... Yeah, thank so you. So denims, uh, Dean and Mama, then Tumble. All right, denims. I'm I sorry to... I talked so much. Oh, no, you're fine. You made a, bu a bunch of good points that I wanted to talk about. Like I, very quickly, I wanted to touch on Silly's point. Or you, you go by Joe, right? Yeah, you can call me whatever. Okay, okay, just making sure. Um, which is like, oh, I lost the point. <laughs> it's okay, I'll come back to it. Um, on on Kat's point, I wanted to say, like, I think also, I noticed you saying it, and I was, like, very happy hearing you, like, call yourself, like, hot and calling yourself, like, smart. Uh, Aces, that makes it's me really in the happy Discord on the voting channel. Do this because you can't win. You can't win. Because if you, if you say, if you're confident with how you feel about yourself and you feel rooted, like you look good and you yeah. say this people we love get mad they're like here. you know fuck you you're just some ugly slut no and if you if you're not confident you're like well i don't know if i feel good they're like you're just fishing for compliments so if you're gonna get mm. the shit on the stick either way why don't you just feel good about yourself and if somebody doesn't yeah. like it fuck them who cares yeah i disagree you can win in one Hell of those yeah, scenarios Disney. you feel good about yourself i feel like that's the winning <laughs> So if other people are going to be mad anyways, pick the one that makes you happier. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I see chicks that call themselves hot and see chicks talking about how they're, they're really smart, it makes me so fucking happy because, like, it's I think it's really hard to get to that point where you don't feel like you're, like, some conceited bitch for saying it. Um, and I wanted to touch on, like, I don't know Holy if this shit, is sort of, like, roaming. a little bit tangential, but, like, did anyone have a phase where they, like, hated the color pink? Like, yeah, because I feel like this was something that I saw like most chicks go through where you had this phase where like, well, I don't want to be feminine because being feminine is cooties and ugh, it's gross. And so now I hate mm -hmm. the color pink. And then like you have like this, this like re like you relearn oh, the love for the color pink. 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 It's in your name. Yes. Pink it's internalized nice. misogyny. I love pink. Mm -hmm. I love pink and I love pink. 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 Like all my academic branding, everything, every time I send out an invoice, pink, pink, pink. It has been reclaimed. Hell yeah. Uh, I love the reclaiming. Uh, Demon Mama oh, and then uh, Double. And Denims, let us know if you remember that point. Or did you, or was that it? I don't remember. Okay, but that's sure. okay. Uh, well, tum uh, Tumbles, you can go first if you want. You did have your hand up before me, technically. So go for Oh, I didn't see want. that. Tumble? You go. Honestly, it's oh, okay. I'm okay. Good. Yeah. Um. God, like, when I had just started streaming, I remember I, I got into a really big argument with a friend um, who was really pissed off about so-called titty streamers and it made me really really mad because i was like like I, I was i was just sitting here like imagine approaching twitch and thinking the big problem with this platform <laughs> is people who happen to show some cleavage and i i just it it made me become so angry i actually i actually lost my cool in that conversation because it, it just makes me so mad um and then there's this other whole thing where it's like there is a, an incentive there for sure. Like I think that it's it's just uh, – I've seen this happen. People who are more willing to um, show off their body and stuff, being able to grow their channel faster and whatever, I think that can certainly happen. I mean sex sells as they say, right? But it's a double-edged sword because on one hand, um, you know, people might come in for that and then you're expected to continue to do that at all times. Um, mm -hmm. I am somebody who, by and large, feels very uncomfortable <laughs> showing my body. Uh, I almost always wear, like, stuff like this. Very occasionally, I might wear, like, um, I think the most, like, risque thing I've ever worn on, on stream is literally just, like, a bra, like, an open, like, a very open top. Like, I just am very weird about that. It, it's, I don't know, maybe it's a trans thing. I don't know. Um, but, uh, on, the, on that hand, it's like, oh, shit, like um if you like all i get like I, I don't know i always talk about this my my fucking dms are on twitch especially it's pretty bad on twitch it happens on on youtube as well it's pretty bad on twitch are just full of of just tons of transphobia and i know i know i'm pretty you know well aware of like my body and what i look like and i know i'm not like traditionally attractive or whatever um and people will tell you that you know they tell you that all the time with the the sort of like oh oh uh, like you're not like this hyper sexualized hyper feminine um trans person oh you you're just an ugly man um which happens all the time um fucking all the time actually um i've gotten pretty strong against it um 
But if people are ever wondering why there's not a whole lot of trans women in these spaces, um, mm -hmm. it's for that reason. It's because it is so horrible and it's so toxic that you have to develop like this, this, um, like adamantine shell that's just in like unpen uh, impenetrable. And like the thing is, I had this moment where like it did actually break my shell. And this was like earlier this year, I went on a friend's stream. And uh, they're generally very chill community. Just all of a sudden, a bunch of transphobia popped up out of nowhere. And I'm just like, ah, I love being the person who can, you know, uh, my, my voice c comes in and it's like, oh, you know, she, her, they can tell I'm feminine leaning, but not apparently convincing enough for them or pretty enough for them or whatever. And all of a sudden you get the, oh, you're a man. And, and oh, well, who the fuck is this ugly bitch and whatever in chat. And I'm just like, oh, nice. I'm, I. I sure love being the person who rustles out the bushes in this way completely unintentionally when I just come on to hang out with friends, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. it is actually really bad. And so like, I do agree with the premise of the question, the idea that there's the, there is a, uh, a complete paradox that's unnavigable. The only way is to bash through it as of mm -hmm. right now. And until we fix these spaces until I don't, and I don't even know what the entire answer is, but until then you have to build a shell and it sucks. It really sucks. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it's just, it, it's one of these things, I mean, fuck, it goes through all over the place, right? And, and, um, this, this pervades so many, so many fucking, um, elements of Twitch culture. And I will say, I don't know that it's like, I don't think it's like intrinsic to Twitch. I just think that Twitch being a particularly visual medium, um, is like a, like, there's a lot of catalysts that can make it worse on Twitch, but it certainly exists elsewhere. This is something I experienced extremely so and when i worked in sales when i worked in a corporate environment oh it's horrific the amount of sexism just casual sexism that's tossed around in sales environments the way you're talked down to the way people like like especially men in positions of power will just completely disregard your humanity and p treat you like you're some kind of um you know piece of meat is is it's actually atrocious and that is to this day so i always um you know i get particularly angry about stuff like this because it feels like people think that it's like a done deal and everything's in the past it's like now this shit is still going on very much to this day um i yeah, mean um yeah so i i want to talk about someone in the chat um and this is in crimes chat because people people don't fucking believe when uh when women like speak out about shit but like um, are we going to act like this is not woman's fault? Why, <laughs> why you are being objectified? E-girls sexualize themselves to get ahead, and it makes it hard for the rest of you. You don't blame the viewers, it's your peers' fault. Are you saying women on Twitch don't use their sexuality to succeed? I'm just saying, before female streamers complain about how males treat them online, maybe they should critique how their peers are presenting themselves. I'm the problem? So there's no blame for the individuals who are using their sexuality to get ahead? That's not equality. Yes, um... because one woman actually represents all women. So if one woman, like, shows her boobies online, that's actually representative of all of us. But I don't want to talk mm -hmm. too much because I know Tumble wants to say some opinions. So. An, an invite to that person. Come to my chat afterwards. I will have you on my stream and I will debate the absolute shit about you. So if you're interested in going up against somebody, <laughs> please come into my stream afterwards. I would absolutely love that and I'm sure my chat would as well. Even Mama is amazing. Please do. It'll be fun. And I'll just dunk on you on Twitter because apparently that's all I'm fucking good at. <laughs> um, right. Thank you, Dennis. Um, I... Yeah, and I think a lot of the time, even if suddenly the world stopped sexualizing women, like... I'm so mad right now. It still happened, and it still affects you, and especially the rampant sexualization you get of oh, being unmute. a Sorry. child, a girl, in our society, especially in our generations, well, it'll follow you forever. It, it, it will. It, it, it gets in your brain, and if... I don't sexualize myself if I purposefully cover up. It's because I don't You're want good. other people to have the choice Just to sexualize me. So mm -hmm. if you cover it up, but then I'm there choosing what I'm doing. I'm doing something influenced on them. And then if I wear very provocative clothing, then yes, I'm making a choice. And I'm, I'm okay, yes, you can see a little bit of my boobies. Can we please keep calm? It's fine. <laughs> They're okay. Okay. Um, we're okay. Um, um, I want and um, the thing is, I'm 
yes, I'm crossing a road. I am, I'm happily crossing this road, but that doesn't mean I deserve to get hit by a fucking car. I'm mm. just crossing this road. No, drivers need to be fucking safe. You need to go, hang on, she does have her boobies out, so I might stop a little bit more because they're a little bit exciting, right? I get it. I get it, but just like, just fuck That's off. Good. What is your problem? If you're getting this, I rate follow, because, speaking. yes, my boobies. boobs are out. Just get a grip. Just summon your strength. And um, everyone has a selling point. I I have a friend, and he has much love. The most. Yep. This is why I come on this panel. Fable is all just like. I wish I had his voice in my internal monologue. He sells his channel on his voice. Chat like, logic. Don't see him. Person? Is he talking about chat logic? Like, like no. Person? Uh, kind of like Corpse, yeah. I don't really know much about Corpse, but I've heard his voice. Um, it's it's uh, Jericho Swan. He does like gaming stuff, but he has no camera, just this gorgeous voice. That's it. He sounds himself on his voice because that's what he does. That's his talent. If people think that I look attractive, and I fucking do, um, then yeah, I'm gonna market off that. Yes, I will. I do get more views the more. The less clothing I wear. And the thing is, if you dislike that so much, just don't talk about it. Don't watch people with their boobs out. You don't have to. If you don't like it, when I'm wearing provocative clothing, if you don't like it when I sexualize myself, then don't be on places I'm where not things sure are sexualized. I, didn't catch the name I think either. it's just so up in arms. It's like somebody else maybe what is so you. what makes you so uncomfortable about my body? And another reason, I think I feel almost not forced, but like so I have, if I have, if I'm fully clothed, I'm completely invisibly disabled. But if I wear like a crop top, what's that bitch? It's my fucking feeding tube. And I want people to see it. I want people to fucking see it. So they look at me and they stare at me and slowly it's getting normalized. So if some poor fucking kid has one, that it's not the first. Mm. That's yeah. a fucking worm in your stomach. And I just, uh, it's so up in arms like, I get grip. I can't even. It's also uh, like I just... um I wanted to comment on like the the person in chat who said that it's uh something about equality because women uh can use their hell yeah uh, that's good on you their like good they can be sexual and um get money from yeah. it and how that's not equality. You're very and, welcome. Um, it's not I fair. Well. It's I not love fair that all these these men, no matter how hard they try, they can't get views because they don't have tits. If only they had tits, then they could be then they could be equal and decent content creators, right? Um, I feel like that makes me really, really angry. The idea that women have um, some kind of privilege because they can sex men can sexualize themselves. Oh, uh, never said that, did you? You know I have a list of all of your fucking like, things <laughs> in chat, right? You know I'm a mod, I can read Please don't rewrite my narrative. Bitch, text. roll up. But, like, oh more importantly, on this point, they always talk oh, about how big of a problem this is, but, like, I think on the top 100 streamers, like, of, like, viewership and, like, income, two of them are female. Yeah. The vast majority of streamers are male. Well, like, and there's attractive men who you, have an advantage. If women were stealing the views, like, this would have happened. Yeah. We would not have the, the analytics we currently have. And also, more importantly, the people who go to booby streamers, like, yes, there is a subset of females on stream on twitch.com and or sorry twitch.tv and yeah they wear low cut shirts and yeah they just talk about like they're they're just chatting streamers maybe they jump on a trampoline maybe people give them subs you know that's fine that's cool you want to know what that dude was never gonna watch you play fortnite i cannot i don't know how to explain this to you if that chick stopped streaming tomorrow they would just get off the platform they're not gonna come watch you play fortnite bro you are not you just like yeah. take one marketing yeah. class you are not in that market segment i don't know how to explain this to you and also so, for the, yeah. the person I, who's I, bringing I, this I, I just wanted to say quickly um oh, sure. one i don't know anything about uh, um you don't get to talk this uh, is your channel. <laughs> I, I i don't know anything about uh these uh booby streamers you, you refer to them as i it's a new concept to me. You'll have to uh, define this maybe later on. Um, but... I have screenshots to prove otherwise, Brian. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, did, you wanna, did you want us to define booby streamers? No, I didn't want you to do it. No, I'm playing with Okay. Um, uh, one, another one is uh, Chill Logic. I just got to say, like, I love the guy. Um, he's also 
does the shoot box with the camera. He's a British person, has the most beautiful voice. I tell him all the time. Anyway, um, but um, I guess my final point was about um, I lost it. Ah, oh, fuck! I had a point. It I had a really good point. It was this, was why, it was this is why you don't talk on this panel, Prime. <laughs> no, Chris. I uh, forgot um, it. Uh, okay, so basically, another issue that I have, and it kind of links back to a few other things, is especially with this guy in chat who's like, but women need to critique their peers. I find that for some reason, a lot of men take the stance of, hey, women fight each other. You guys need to be mean. You need to hate her. You need to think she's your rival. You need to think she's Solidarity. Ugly. You need to think that she's going to take everything from you. Shut the fuck up. Literally, women supporting women is the best thing to ever like it's incredible and women are so nice to other women but i find that and i've had this conversation before on several panels men for some reason have it in their head that we just hate each other like we are just the competition like, we're at each oh, other's throats oh my god oh, cat, you're cat like fight. women interacting is when they were in oh, high school wait wait can you That's send me, me that link and Nuts, you know can what you DM me that link? Girls, not gonna lie that kind of they kind of bitchy. Yeah, I was a bit of a bitch in high school. Great. I was I was mean to everyone. Literally because everyone. We're taught. We're we, taught it is competitive, that there's a lack of that there can only be one yeah. girl that is Yeah, like is the yeah. And it, it was and it's because there's these so, people only have like that exposure okay. to women interacting with each other and then also exposure to the VOD, uh, like I'd love movies that. and shit like that. And how <laughs> women I would love to watch that. There. It's um, written by it's gonna men. Be pretty long. I'm gonna go only a few, exposure like a bit longer, to women. Gina. Well, when they I were in think... high school, like it's it's a oh, cycle, uh, and I then they'll write like, high school hour, movies maybe? that are of girls being like, "I'm the popular girl, and fuck you," and like that's their whole character. Let me check. I can and then and tell you. high school age kids see that, and they're like, "Wow, I I'm yeah, not I think like it's other about, girls. About one more that, hour. that girl is really cool." And then they do that, and then the cycle continues. Like it's. It's never ending. And Thanks, Gina. Like, oh my gosh, I Her, I feel like uh, Trix is definitely right on the nose with like men wanting women to fight with each other and then being like, oh, see, it's just how see, I do. Women, I'm soft. women are see? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. See, I was right. I was right. Um, fight for uh, me. Just additionally, everyone else in chat is like, no, we don't. You mean some men? I said what I said, <laughs> bitch. I did. Did I? Did I oh stutter? Not this time. <laughs> Literally, shut the fuck up. Um. <laughs> I no no men. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna. Oh, 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 oh. Um, all men? You mean some men? <laughs> um, this is the oh, problem. No, it's don't. just oh, I, this is also why I don't like having these conversations in male spaces. Is because I'll say something like a man, like a cis man, has never been in a space that is all women. Because as uh, soon as he enters that women. space, it is not then all women. And they will be like, I'm gonna hate you. I'm gonna go. And I'm like, this is not rocket science. This Basic was with stuff. Anthony Spoon. Uh, <laughs> this, is um, like, this day was <laughs> like the worst panel day of my fucking life. When it we were like, so hey, funny. you have literally never been in a space that is all women because the second because you get you there, are it men. is not all women, right? And then he's like, no, I talk to women and they tell me what it's like. <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I'm you sure, understand, um, I'm the woman every, you know, every time yeah. someone tells you something, it's a complete exact representation of women's spaces, right? No. Um, <laughs> and real right. quick, someone's like, isn't the inverse true? Yes. Yeah. I have. I have never been in a space that is all men because the minute I enter that space, it would not be all men. And I have the ego and have that. the confidence to acknowledge that and say I've never been. In, I've never done that. Some Bucket list, perhaps. True. But it's just. Ugh. Also, I, 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 with what Joe was saying earlier about how there's like a thing when you're younger to be like, oh, I'm not one of the boys. I'm not like the other girls. That's like a thing that like when I was on the, I was left unattended with the internet from a very young age. And in grade seven, I was full on like other, like, I am not like other girls because I have thoughts. I am convinced that other women do not have thoughts. Tricks, the we fact, are the same person. <laughs> the fact that I have read a book and other girls have picked up eyeliner, oh, okay, they I'll are save not, this they have no brains. It's I like, I, I was fully convinced. And then one day I just was like, oh, it's internalized uh, sexism. Yeah. I'm just hating yeah, women because men. I remember, because I remember men like thinking to myself, like, I'm never to. gonna wear makeup. 
Uh, it's bad for your skin. And we're not fucking stupid for even yes. wearing foundation because it's so bad for your skin anyway. Fucking stupid women. I'm really smart and I'm never going to wear makeup. And you know what? I play Minecraft and I'm I'm cool and I'm one of the boys. So like, I want to hear uh, from, from Demon Mama who had her hand up. Um, and before then, I just want to say, I remember my, my, my point. Um, it's just that like, because uh, Demon Mama, you have been talking about um, how you feel on stream, right? Um, and showing yourself. And uh, we had a really a cathartic stream um, here months ago. Uh, we had a, a topless stream um, like, uh, on this channel. And uh, yeah, we had, uh, well, topless me um, and um, uh, topless cis women, uh, topless trans women. Um, and it was it was really cathartic because people were, were, were talking about their body issues and like showing themselves off and the pressures. Some of this came up that you're talking about. Um, uh, pressures for women on Twitch. And then pressures like um, just uh, that all these insecurities that we're never allowed to bring up. Um, so I don't know, like it was great because we were like saying you could do this and not necessarily have to be sexualized. Like all the women who were on stream, they had to cover up the nipples because of course nipples melt uh, children's brains. Um, but um, yeah, but it was just, it was, it was a really nice moment. Um, so like, I don't know, I, I'm not sure if that's useful to anyone, but like, um, I think it's it, it, there's a power in trying to take back um, uh, uh, that space that you find yourself insecure in, saying that I, I, I will be here. Like, you, I, you're going to have all kinds of thoughts about me, but that's okay. Um, I exist here, and I belong here like anyone else. So, I don't know. All right. No, uh, actually, that sounds – it actually sounds like that would be a really cathartic experience. And, like, just thinking about it, I'm like, damn, that actually sounds super chill. Um, and it is something that's, like – uh yeah it's 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 a nerve-wracking experience because it is something that like i mean again i i've i've always had some like issues with my body for a number of reasons um when i was younger um like like i had a family member who like t targeted women specifically so keep in mind this was before transition but apparently i fell well enough within the uh the femme interaction that i became one of the targets as well but all the women in our family were targeted by this family member for being overweight um, and, uh, inclu and that included me. Um, and, and so that's something that I've, that's always been, um, a, something I'm very sensitive to because it happens so frequently. Um, but there's like a couple of things that I wanted to, to touch on, um, in response to what everyone's been saying, which this has been, by the way, the feedback that I'm getting from my chat right now is just, people are loving this conversation, which is why I always love to get on this panel because it's so wonderful. It's such a rare thing. Um, but it's like so. One of them um, is is this thing of like, in response to this person who trolled the chat and whatever. Well, you've given us a lot to talk about. Um, one of which is like, um, there are plenty of men who utilize sexual attractiveness, physical attractiveness, to an incredible advantage. Um, I mean, to one example is the biggest politics streamer in the world, um, Hassan. Like, like, like this guy, like he's a good looking guy and he knows it and like he has a you know a thirst instagram and all this stuff and like that if that's you can't you can't say that's not an advantage it's just an advantage as much of an advantage as any so-called booby streamer um but like you know it's it's very rare that you would see that be like oh men need to men who are you know don't use face cam need to be taking hassan to account it's like what like come on like this is such a it's such a, a, a different, like, I don't know, it's such a, a weird, you know, angle on that. And it's just like, oh, God. And then the other thing I wanted to address is, and this goes out to, um, you know, predominantly cis men in chat. Um, cis men who may have never experienced the, um, the incredible amount of sexism that actually exists in the world and who really maybe are, are um, insulated to it. I'm just going to tell you a story from um an experience i had about two years after i um after i transitioned um when i didn't feel like i was like attractive at all i didn't even think i looked particularly feminine but apparently um it was enough for society as a whole to decide that it was time for me to start getting harassed in public mm -hmm. um and i was literally one day i was literally wearing pajamas and boots and I was had a tank top, and I was just talking to my family member on the phone, and um, I was just walking back and forth, like literally in my own neighborhood. And a, a car drove by, and they like slowed down a little bit, and I was like, 
okay. Uh, and then they came back again, slowed down again, and I, and that was when I really noticed it. was like, okay, why is this car passed me two times? And so I was, like, getting a little nervous. And I was like, maybe I'm just being paranoid, whatever. Um, so I decided to start walking back um, towards my house. And this person um, pulled by again. This time they rolled down their window, and they were trying to offer me, like, a cigarette. And I'm like, no, sorry, I don't smoke. I don't smoke. And they were like, oh, are you married? And I was like like why is that any of your business and i was like and so i started i'm like please you're being really weird right now and then i started to walk and they literally took their car pulled into the driveway in front of me and blocked me and said why won't you tell me if you're married i just wanted to ask a question you know i just wanted to know like i want to know if you're single and i was like please get out of my way because you're freaking me out and they were like oh i see how it is fine then fuck you bitch and they rolled up their window and pulled out and drove away and thank God they did because I was actually terrified that I was going to get, like, like attacked or something because they had literally used their car to physically block my space. And again, like, this was, like, again, like, two years right after I'd started transition. Like, I, I didn't feel like I was, like, you know, super, super hot or anything like that. But it's just – it's that bad. So for – for, again, guys who may have never experienced anything like this, this is remarkably common. It happens to fucking every woman on this planet. It's every femme yep. fem presenting person on this planet gets it. I had uh, I had so many opinions on everything you said because it was all like, oh my god, it was all fucking good. Um, the and I also wanted yeah, to seriously talk about, that actually happened. you you said something that was very very like pointed and i thought it was really good and it relates simply to something that tumble said way earlier which is like even when stuff happened like even if we remove sexism today there's stuff that's probably happened to every woman on this panel when she was younger that was like fucked and like when it happens as an adult it's still fucked but when it happens to you when you're like a teenager even very small stuff like i was walking home once i was like i was like 13 or something like that and this car was like was like circling me and like the dude like was like do you want to get in my car and shit like what the fuck like and i looked like a 13 year old like you can make an argument like okay well maybe he didn't know how old you were maybe he thought you were an adult like he was just being a creepy person towards another no no no. i was a very dweeby looking 13 you couldn't look at me and be like is that an adult no no no. and that, that shit's really like it like fucks with you it doesn't it's not comfortable and like yep, it fucks i think uh, when you tell oh, city men cat, like, let me give hey, you this that. Is something that happens it almost seems like unbelievable or something like there's no way it happens that often like and and i think for a lot of women we like burn it out of our memory as soon as possible as soon as it happens it's like okay i need to forget this so i can feel good again um so when it's like when it comes time to like remember stuff you might only come up with like two three things four things at there a time there you go city cat like the amount of times i've walked I got you. like cross a street like a crosswalk it's green I'm, i can go and i get like car in front of me just like or that's like waiting just honks and and like every time i look it's just like some dude like fucking making a face and it's like like why like wh what's the purpose i went outside the other day just to like I was just chilling on a bench, and this dude did the most fucking creepy shit in the world. He passed me and, like, murmured some stuff and then walked halfway down the next block and then came back and then stood and stared at me. Like, just stared at me. Like, I literally got up because I was so mad about it. Like, that you think that you can just do this while I just want to just – I just want to sit on this bench. I was just on the phone. I got so mad. I, like, glared, and I just, like, stormed off. And it's like, okay, well, I guess I go find a different bench to sit on now. Great, wonderful. And yep. really quickly on the Hassan point, I'm sorry. on the attractiveness, I have, like, I don't want to obviously dox people because, like, these are private conversations, but I've had friends with, like, male streamers who get decent viewership nah, and they're like, not really nuts. dude, Hassan? He's on to something with that whole looking hot thing. You know, I need to I need to up my hot game. You know, like, this is their response to it. And they're like, yeah, you know what? I think if I got hotter, more people would watch me. And I'm like, good, <laughs> like, good, good for you. Hot. I mean, I don't know how, how well it would work, but, like, yeah, good for you. So why is it such a problem if women think that? Like, women are like, okay, I want to improve how I look. I want to look better. I want to, like, feel better about how I look on Sexism the screen. But suddenly the now we're fucking sluts because we want to look good. And we're using an unfair advantage. But if men think the thought, yeah, then it's yeah. okay. You know? So, uh, Joe, Trix, and Kat. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, of course, attractiveness is going to play into it. It's a visual medium. I think there are some issues where, like, our cultural conception of what attractiveness is is really important to take into account as well um, and, like, who that might be blocking out. Um, but I think – oh, God, sorry. So many things have been said that I want to comment on. But it's, like, uh, what Darren said about the bench. Like, I remember getting really um, terrifyingly catcalled 
um, like a, a truck that had one of those like side doors that pull open. Like they were driving really slowly next to me talking. I was trying not to listen, talking to me out the window while I'm walking down a street on my way to a job interview. And like, I always try to bring up this example to people because I think a lot of people are like, it's catcalling, it's a compliment. And it's like in that moment when I needed to feel smart and capable and like really ready to take on this high important job that I was interviewing for, I was reduced to feeling like a sexual object and powerless and afraid. And so what you view as a compliment made me feel like yeah, something true, to be devious. consumed in true a moment. Devious. And I really did think like last night when I was thinking about this and going to bed, I was like, I think I do get opportunities because I look a certain way without yeah, question. Just... I mean, I'm an actor as well. So like I have to look a certain way. Otherwise I don't work. Um, but like that's, a reflection on the industry that is horrible but it's just the truth but I think even in academia I get attention from certain people that other people might not get attention from so I think yes there are opportunities there but as demon mama said earlier when I really reflect on it what is then expected of me as a result doesn't equal out to being some sort of privilege because I'm not getting attention because I'm smart I'm not getting attention yep. because they value my sword. work I'm getting attention because they're an old white male academic and they want the pretty young new PhD candidate on their arm. They don't want me because of my work. They want me because I look a certain way. So actually, then I get put in really creepy and uncomfortable shit, situations yeah. where I'm alone with these people who are meant to be helping me, who are in a higher power position than me. That's fair. And that's I'm fair. feeling like, well, what, what do they expect? What do I have to give? And the same thing happens with streaming. If you stream and you're too sexual, this entitlement comes in where people are like, I'm entitled... I, I subscribe to you. You need to talk to me. I offer you support. I watch you. Why aren't you talking to me? Because you're there for my consumption. I'm paying you to give me attention. And it's this thing where you no longer have any agency, desire, interest. You as a human being, doesn't matter. And people are entitled to you and entitled to things from you. And it's fucked. So it doesn't really matter if it gets you further because it puts you into a more dangerous position ultimately yeah and and something i wanted to build off of that is like i think this is something that like a lot of um especially like like guys who are just in chat who've never done this or who've never lived life as a woman like don't really get which is that like we know all women know that there are advantages to showing your tits it's just that advantage comes at costs and it's like, yeah, I could do that, but it, I know that that's only going to that's only going to bring a certain type of support. It's a very shallow benefit. So it's like, I think there's like this, like again, and some of this is really like worsened when you get into like the politics of like red pill and and the incel stuff, which we don't have to, I, I we don't need to dive into at all. But that whole thing, hmm. there's like these myths that have perpetuated that it's just like, oh yeah, you can just all that a woman has to do is go into a science place and put on a low cut shirt and all of a sudden you will get a big pay high paying science job and it's like no it's not that it's that you have to not only you have to not only be smarter than every other person in your in your in your in your field but you also need to be out competing them on like 10 different levels and you also need to wear a low cut shirt because if not the 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 old guys who are a bunch of ho horny old guys who ha decide your future in the field will zone out and start looking at the ceiling um, while you're trying to present your fucking scientific information. It, it's so fucking annoying. It's not like this free pass. It's like one thing that you can do to get a very specific type of attention, and that might be advantageous in very slim cases, and that's about it. So I, it makes me... It would it makes me boil like my blood fucking boil every time I hear people being like, ah, oh, the titty streamers are ruining Twitch. It's like, no, they're fucking not. Like you don't even know what you're talking about. Just please, like, oh, it makes me so mad. Uh, Trix. Um, I have two points separate to bring up. The first one's kind of short. Um, women in STEM have Aww, to be. You, I literally dropped out of doing a STEM uh, university degree because it was disgusting towards the women there, but you have to be like looking so so amazing to be worthy of your spot there but also not too good otherwise you only got the spot by looking good precisely so you got to walk that fine line uh meanwhile anyone remember the news article where some guy i'm gonna say i'm so dumb here a, a nasa dude did something with space it was like a big deal and when he did it he was wearing a top that had a literal like porn screenshot on it 
and he was like like all the like official like people who did the science and he's literally wearing like a naked woman and it was like oh how come the women around him have to be so immaculate but men can show up like this and still be taken seriously and still be commended as experts in their field it just seems a bit eh. um but also in terms of sexualizing women on the internet and how like catcalling uh for most women, uh, I'm, I'm going to say most women, it starts as a preteen. True like, enough. I remember being in seventh grade and walking to school, I would have to, like, not wear headphones because men would, like, like it's just True literally detective. from primary school. So, uh, it's like, yeah, so coming on to that, it's like a thing now that people yeah, are like, oh, this is what... Yeah. 13 year olds look like on instagram when i was 13 i looked ugly and it's like stop um, looking at them <laughs> uh well no no it's like uh, like other girls are saying this too they're like oh my god how come 13 year olds look so like she's got her hair done she's got makeup she like looks amazing when i was 13 i looked terrible and it's like maybe because growing up now especially with the internet and image women are being mm. pressured to look so like good all the time if that makes sense like mm -hmm. um, i think nasa's great you can't See you later, be like Cassidy. a have child a anymore it's i have to be a child while also looking beautiful but i can't look too beautiful or others will say i'm jailbait like it's just it's disgusting that there is such a not really a market but like such um a, a community yeah. surrounding like discourse with whether or not it's okay to like say certain things about literal children on the internet who are just looking nice and wanting to look pretty and wear the latest trends which just word. so happen to yeah. be a cropped up in a short skirt and people are like oh mm -hmm. she's trying she's trying to look like she's trying to look like an a, a, a porn star and she's 13 no she's a child wearing fucking spray like calm down also this with makeup where like i don't know about other people but for me when i picked up makeup when i was younger it was it was 100% an expression tool. I was just really fun. It was like really fun because I would watch these YouTube videos and I'd be like, I want to do that. How did they do that? You know, so like, I think this is like this weird, like sexualization of like teenagers because they're wearing like lots of makeup. It's like, chances are they probably are doing it because they want to do the makeup mm -hmm. because it looks pretty and they see that their favorite online personality is also doing it. It's it's not anything mm -hmm. deeper than that, and we shouldn't look at it that way. And that's kind of like a that's kind of like an out like a like an outgrowth of this sort of like of uh, like victim blamey mentality, right? This sort of like oh, it's on the women. Like oh, it can't just be that like a thirteen year old girl just wants to do makeup because like she's aspiring to be like you said, like the adults that that she idolizes or whatever. No, it has to be that oh, she's trying to get my attention from some dude who's just like. Why, yeah, mm -hmm. why are you, why are you, like, why are you looking this much into, into, like, teenagers' Instagrams accounts, if that's what you're looking for? Like, what the fuck? Like, this person is just trying to feel out their identity and who they are, and you're the one who's sexualizing it. You are imposing that on someone else. Joe? Yeah, no, I just wanted to, and I want to throw to, um, Priestess and Tumble as well, but I, I just wanted to say on, on what Trix is saying, this for me is the greatest frustration in my job like when I go to work at university, if I put on any makeup or dress at all like a professional, then I'm viewed as like dressing up for attention. But if I don't do that, I'm viewed as unprofessional. I'm viewed as coming to work looking Cilleraces. sloppy. And what annoys me about that is the male academics my age look like pieces of literal shit. Like they look like they rolled out of bed and walked onto university campus. But if I put in effort, I'm I'm to use drag terminology i'm resting on pretty but if i if i just come like in what i want to come in like some baggy jeans and a baggy shirt i'm unprofessional and so i find this like the way that looking a certain way is viewed as being professional for women whereas that same professional criteria isn't put on men extremely frustrating especially when i get yep. it's a, it's a double bind i mean it's just another double bind for women because i get punished either way i either way i'm either unprofessional or i'm stupid i'm a bimbo so um can't win yep. um uh to um 
<laughs> your high priestess. Uh, wait, I uh, do high priestess. Tell um, me my mistakes uh, tum- on the list. Oh, one second. No, you uh, said it was going to be dirty tricks on their name. Tumble. Um, I'll address uh, that afterwards, like Voucho Marks. <laughs> we'll talk about that. I'll put that in the question. Um, document. I will hop in and hop out because I'm so I'm so fucking tired. I have to go to sleep. Um, I work in the morning and shit. But to answer the question. Legally, I have to scroll back to the actual fucking question for you. Um, ride boobs on Twitch. I'm gonna have to run over like all of what you said in like the next like 30 seconds, but I got this. I I got this. Internalize it all the way. I'm still. I still have it. I still am fighting it every single day. But it's not like you know. I've gotten over like ah boobs. I'm so angry. Why don't she put her boobs away and say something intelligent? I'm like over being annoying as hell. But then now I'm like oh well. Weren't you just jealous? Smile. Aren't you just jealous that other people have attention because they showed showed their boobs and you couldn't get that same attention? Is that is that kind of what you're saying? Is that is that saying you're not willing to do that? And they you know come on. Um, I agree 100% that no, they're not gonna go watch your stream if they were watching a boob stream. It's not the same demographic at all. Um, I think that people should leave women alone. I think that it, it, it would this conversation wouldn't exist if there weren't creepy incels sitting at their home, what you know, with their computer uh, the on all nuts. day long. Like Check out the voting that shit is burning Discord. out. Like turn your computer off, go outside, get some sunlight. Uh, you know, it's, it's just an unfortunate reality for women that you do have to kind of just accept this. And I kind of thought it was something you just have to accept, but now I'm realizing it's kind of really fucked up that that's something that you have to deal with as a woman. Mm-hmm. But I just figured, like, you're going to be female. It doesn't even matter if you're cute or not. Like, just being vote. a female means that, you know, people are going to punch down. People are going to come after you, and you're just going to have to, like, open the inbox message and then, you know, delete it and then move on from there. But I didn't realize that that's just a female um, experience men don't really get. Like, met, you tell men these stories about, like, yeah, some random guy – you know, in the subway, put my toe in his mouth, and they're like, "What are you fucking talking about?" And I'm like, "Yeah, weird, weird things happen to me all the time. I, it's just part of my life." Um, so you know, I, I can't make any other bigger point on what we should do about that because I'm still every day kind of like shocked that we have to deal with these kind of things. And yeah, I, you'd I be amazed at the sort of things that happen. Just get over it, but it's pretty maybe wild. that's not the the take. If maybe if I can get rid of this that's internalized fair. misogyny, then just get over it will also melt away with that. <laughs> um there was more to this question i actually wanted to oh are we double-edged sword yes definitely but it's a it's marketing it's marketing it's a it's a visual thing everything on your screen matters everything you say matters um someone talked t- touched on how you know to what extent are you the content and to what extent are you just yourself and um that's really difficult it's really difficult to have to set that standard of like oh my boobs are going to be out every day or no one's going to be here you do know those streamers who play video games for one second and it's like i thought you had a thousand views regularly how do you only have 50 something people here that doesn't even make any sense like literally hundreds of people only came here to look at your cleavage and to me that's just devastating and not something i'm willing to i don't i don't think i'm willing to set people up to come in to just look at my boobs like uh, you know it's not who i am and and i guess that would be a perfect way to end this for me when it comes to my decision when it uh, you know starting streaming what am i going to present how am i going to present myself i think that first is just who i am I, I have i've i had d cups when i was in high school um which is the size of a triple d if you like are doing boob math right now and <laughs> um, nobody knew the only people who knew are people that i like told for like clout and like people in the locker room otherwise nobody else knew because i wore big sweaters big shirts it's it, not how i presented myself and then ever so often i'd wear something like really attractive especially like in my last year of school and i really i basked in that attention but I, it was also like you can't you can't hide now so it was it was definitely a double-edged sword i don't think it's worth it and when i present myself on stream i just try and present myself as i am so it's not like you know it's you might come in and see boobs some days, but that's just because I own them. Um, and sometimes I wear clothes that show them off because I own clothes that don't always cover all my body because I'm not a fucking nun. So, <laughs> so that's my take. Um, and for the girls who like that's their content, I think that everyone should yeah, just go get cool a life and, and get over you know bashing people who present certain parts of themselves for entertainment whether that be their personality their voice or their body we just just get over your fucking selves it's boobs move on
That I'm was like, a very drop the mic moment uh, of you right there. That was really nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, blah. I'm really sleepy. I'm glad that wasn't like garbage because I have to go to bed now. Um, but I'm the High Priestess. I stream pretty much every night on Twitch unless I'm babysitting or, you know, basking in, in my own anxiety and deciding that I don't feel like doing that. Um, but yeah, I stream. I play video games. Um, I watch videos about nonsense. I scream about politics. You know the drill. It's who I am. Thanks for having me. It's been absolutely fun. And I, I absolutely have to go. So, bye. Um, hold on. Go to leave before you leave. Hold on. I gotta say nice things about you. Say um, nice things about me now! First of all, the hi, nice Pisa, things yeah, thanks for coming through. You've been nice things, nice things, things in. I've enjoyed you every single time. Um, so, please never doubt that. Uh, you're definitely invited to, to all these things. And I adore you more because I saw you get up, walk away, and I realized you're wearing a Batman robe. Uh, 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 with a cowl equipped, please put it on. Thank you very much. Oh my god, it has ears. Oh, it has eye holes too. Oh, my god, it's so great. <laughs> it's so pog. <laughs> I love you even more than I did previously. Thank you, I pieces for that. Uh, yeah, you have a great night. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, okay, uh, Tumble, Amazing. Does you have something to say, and then we'll go to a uh, cat uh, before she murders me. <laughs> um. I think it's mostly been covered. I think, uh, you know, the thing we're circling back to is that a lot of the time, um, being pretty is the expected rent you pay to exist as a woman. And when you what pay that rent, that. What a you're good way criticized to put that. for fucking partaking in landlords or however the fuck you want to say it. If I exist in the world, someone's like, oh, you're pretty. I'm going to fucking, pa you know, oh, you're really smart, you're good at maths, bugger off and be a mathematician. So I don't know why we're so, I mean, I do know why, but we're so uptight about selling certain things about yourself. There's certain things that women can't, that, that, that society accepts women not to sell about themselves. And they can sell their intellect, but they'll still be criticised. If they sell their body, then that's wrong, because that body is supposed to belong to their fucking husband or whoever the fuck and it's just like why are you still criticizing people for just existing like people just exist and you're so up in arms like get a life just think about something else get a hobby knitting you know all fucking sorts just stop having a go at people for just uh, why does it affect you yeah if i put a top I agree, on would devious. anything change it's a really good, good would topic. anything change it's just bullshit and i think it's all been covered thank you uh, City Cat, tell us your amazing point, please. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about um, women wanting this. Um, when we're young, we're taught to want the this attention that is uh, damaging. And um, like I would wear my school uniform when walking home from school uh, when I was fifteen. Um, and you know what? I had boobs. Uh, I know it's like a sin. But I had boobs, and I would wear push-up bras um, because they weren't as big oh, as other girls' Shemosky. boobs. And you know what? Shemosky. Disgusting men would yell at me from trucks while I was walking home. I had Best something well. thrown at me Best once. Best of luck on the test. And because they the would be like, test. nice, nice. Hopefully it's negative. Yeah. And they would just yell, and or they would just like scream at me. Or one of them yelled, like, fuck me. And it happened... Every single time I walked home from school. Every single time from grade 10 All to grade 12. And I loved it. I was like, this is so great. These men, I, I'm getting man attention. And it's so great. And I'm loving it. And I'm so pretty. And I bet when I'm walking home, I bet my boobs look really good because I'm wearing a push-up bra. And like I'm wearing a shirt that's too small for me because I know that it makes my waist look better and my boobs look bigger at the same time. And I'm getting this disgusting, disgusting man yelling at me and i liked it and i didn't I, like i was told that it was a good thing like guys would come up to me and be like like that's that's good it means like the men like you and men liking you is like the most important thing in the world because um i grew up True, getting Yuki. bullied by guys i i was sitting outside of it once uh outside of my it class waiting for class to start there was like yellow stars a, a for thing subs, of like yeah. plants next to me a guy uprooted a plant and threw it at my face and I got dirt like all in my computer and in my hair and shit just because I like I was just there and I had a pretty shit experience with bullying in high school and 
it red. was like, man, if only I had that man's validation. Maybe if my mm. boobs are a bit bigger and I offered to suck his dick, then he will like me. Like, it was very much like I, I wanted something that wasn't hate. It was like, mm -hmm. if, if they are overtly objectifying you and sexualizing you, even in a way that like is disgusting and uh, un like justified, like it's better than them like hating you. Mm. And it it was drilled into my brain that like being objectified and sexualized was a good thing. And that like I didn't I don't know. It was and it's still like there, you know what I mean? Like when guys yeah, when guys yell at me from cars now, I'm still like, ooh, attention. Mm -hmm. And then I have this like, like thing afterwards where it's like, that was really gross. And I do that. I don't do it with cars, but when people are like, my DMs are filled with men sending me dick pics and shit. I'm like, yeah, cool. Then I'm ugly because my DMs are full. <laughs> it, and then I have to be like, oh my god, what are you doing? It's really funny. Yeah, like it's this is something that's discussed um in a lot of like trans spaces as well. This weird, um affirm like like weird sense of affirmation you get if you get forcibly like forcibly hit on like where it's like like yeah. even if it's unwanted in one way on the other hand it's like oh i feel affirmed because somebody is recognizing my femininity or whatever um I'm getting this cis female experience yeah yes. yeah right and it's like <laughs> and is it i guess that just goes to show you how deeply it's driven into us all and like and there's nothing wrong with like with liking the attention it's just that we're taught our whole lives that the only way you get to have that attention you know is if you uh if you do the service the visual service so to say and that's it and and yeah. like I, I i i like the 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 idea of like this is the rent you pay to exist in public is like the best way i've ever heard that put it's it's so true that is like such a good way of putting it like holy shit yeah um, i um i I think that like uh young girls aren't taught enough how uh bad it is when old men come up to you and try and hit on you. Like I would I would be in my school uniform and grown ass men would come up and be like I like I'm going to I want to fuck you. And it, and I would be like, "Oh, I'm yeah. a grown up. That's totally That's fair, fine." Jessica. Like cuz I didn't that's that was like straight up pedophilia like i'm 14 and yeah, there's true, a, a true grown man there. trying to fuck me no it's, and I it's thought, epibilia I thought or whatever I was, they call it yeah, epibilia, yeah. Yeah. epibilia yeah i mean it happens when i was 13 does that make yeah, it pedophilia? That it's, just, it's bad um and i think it, i wasn't taught enough that it was bad i was too like enamored in this and like he he doesn't hate me like he likes me and that's a good thing and now it's like an adult like oh i'm that makes me an adult i'm more grown up now because grown ups are hitting on me like it's mm. um, um, i, I also want to say one more thing um someone in chat was like this isn't unique to the female experience no one fucking said it was um also whenever women talk about women's problems there's always someone there to tell us that men also have problems please just let us talk about women's problems without bringing up the fuck the fucking fact that men have problems true it's not that difficult if you wanted to do an all men's panel where you talk about men's problems i wouldn't be in the chat being like that is every oh, single panel on twitch too? other than this one <laughs> but how dare you talk about men's assault rates women are getting assaulted too like but, nobody's gonna uh, like, fucking do that Cat, no. I am oppressed. God fucking damn it. Why won't you listen to me? Because this is no fucking <laughs> oh, silly. <laughs> the whole point of this um, panel is to talk about women's issues. So um we can acknowledge that uh men have issues too, but that is not what this panel is about. We are not here to discuss men's issues, we are here to discuss uh women and femme presenting people's issues. Um it Maya, I think that I hand up. Um yeah, I just someone in my chat saying about 100% parental problems. Now, um, how fucked up is it that 
having an absentee whether absentee father whether emotionally or, or, or physically or however the fuck is so commonplace in our society that there's this whole like mm. daddy issues trope for it do you not think that's an underlying fucking issue with men if there is so many fucking absentee fathers so many fathers who treat their children especially their girls like shit who just don't fucking want True. to be parents and just don't True. deal with it if you don't, don't sit there and go well it's just parental problems then fucking fix it because it's it's yeah there's a trope of like mummy issues but it's not to the same extent that daddy issues is and then what you do is you you shame the woman for the daddy issues it's like whose yeah. fucking fault is that because it's not fucking mine but what do you think i was doing what the, and also about the whole kind of um city cat was saying about the 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 grooming essentially from grown up men as a child, as a preteen, as a young teen, um, and how it fucks with your ability to set boundaries as an adult. It goes mm-hmm. into your adult life. Uh, you're not just groomed as a kid or something and then it stops and then you grow up and you grow out of it. Like, it really, really, really messes with your psyche and you will never be the fucking same. And the ho- the rest of my life you you just the rest of your life you have to live with it knowing that that situation changed you and you have no control over that knowing that the rest of your life will be tainted by that fucking one choice that someone who who should have protected you who should have who was older than you who was in a position of power it should oh, it, yeah mhm um okay uh so uh let's go to uh tricks denims um and then uh joe if joe has something out there um, just additionally, I wanted to touch on with what City Cat was saying. Um, I also think we need to start teaching young women that the fact that you are in the school uniform while this is happening is part of the appeal to them. The fact that this is happening more now that you got braces, that's part of the appeal to them. The younger you will look, the more this will happen. Don't take any of that as a compliment. It's none of, explain to them that none of it's on them. It is on the grown man doing yeah, this. I it's agree. like the daddy yeah. issues thing. It's fucked up that we are blaming a generation, uh, multiple generations of women uh, for what happened to them as children by grown adults. Like, which one should be... Which which one of them should have the, like, terrible reputation slash thing over their head for the rest of their lives? Probably not the child. Um, mm. Yeah, I just... The whole, like, school uniform being part of the appeal is just the biggest thing that I wanted to bring up because it just, I hate it so much. Uh, I hate everything about, like, not not even just, like, I don't know, there's, like, a thing, like, I I don't want to bring her up, but Belle Delphine especially. Like, there's this whole thing with sexualizing women on, not only in the Twitch community, but it's also on, like, Instagram and Twitter these days, where it's the more that you can be like i am 25 but i look like i'm 12 like that in a way like even though it's like oh you're an you're an adult the fact that you are like baiting people where it's like look how young i look i got braces just so i can look younger like like it's just i, mean, I don't know i thought that was something. in porn for like teacher yeah. student stuff and they're all adults but they're pretending like but i'm only 16 it's yeah. really weird. We should all be able to look at that and say it's really weird. But sorry to interrupt you if you still had more thoughts. No, I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> Gems? It's, it's, yeah, it's really insidious. I, I was going to say something that like really makes me mad. Like It really makes me fucking fumingly mad. In my experience, it's been the case that the same people who say, like, sexism is over, women can vote now, and, you know, like, we have, we don't have Sharia law here, so therefore, it's, we fixed it, the problem's been fixed, are the same fuckers who will say, like, yeah, but I don't want to have daughters, because then I have to think about, like, they're gonna get a boyfriend, uh, and, and then period, so I don't want daughters, you know, and it's like, Mm. Oh, so you're saying that there is still a fucking problem, right? That's what you're saying. You're saying that there is still a fucking problem. You just don't want to say that there is, because then that would make you and hold you responsible. You fucker. Mm. It makes me so you're mad. You're exactly right. The people who uh, push, for instance, um, 
the uh, Iraq uh, and Afghanistan war, right? Especially the Afghanistan war. Um, we're talking about how the Taliban are still terrible to women and the Taliban are terrible to women, right? Uh, but it was a selling point that we we're going to be rescuing women, right? We we're going to be ending the Sharia law. We're going to give women freedom. But literally the exact same people who were doing that were like, oh, yeah, but women in our country don't have a choice about what they do with their bodies, right? Like, of course, I mean. Right. But that's not the same thing, guys, obviously. I mean, I'm also doing it because of my religion, but it's not the same thing. Um, it's amazing how uh, conservatives and fundamentalists have um, uh, all these things in common. Right. Like if they actually got together, and even though they're from different religions, from different parts of the uh, world, if they actually got together and talk, talked it out, they're like, oh, yeah, we hate all the same people. Um, why can't we just be friends? Right. So, um, yeah. Yes, it was fascinating. Um, OK. Oh, did you want to say something, Joe? Yeah, I just want to say something really quickly. First of all, I reject anyone who tries to argue with me on those axes that it's oh. worse somewhere else or it was worse before and therefore now what we have is acceptable. Uh, one. Second is relating back to what Trix was saying and um, what Denims was saying. Not even all with that. It comes down to this like obsession with female thinness and this obsession with... Uh, getting rid of all body hair, making women look like they are stuck in this prepubescent phase. And it also comes down to the way we don't value older women and older women are erased because as women get intellectually more powerful and emotionally more powerful, and once they start to have some autonomy and understanding of themselves, we depower them socially. Like misogyny is the law enforcement wing of the patriarchy. And so we hate everything that makes a woman fully self-actualize and tell her that she only has value when she looks and acts like a 12 year old it's mm. really funny that you bring that up um because this was something i was thinking of earlier and i lost my train of thought and i really wanted to touch on this which is um and it kind of ties back to the representation thing we were talking about earlier um this was like 10 years ago now when i was first like before i even had transitioned there was this part of my life where i was just severely doubting um, my, like, right to transition or whatever, like, it's really complicated, the whole trans thing, but to not go on that, but part of the thing was that I couldn't find, like, non-sexualized female heroes, and I was like, mm -hmm. I can't think of any, I can't find any, I can't identify with these, and I couldn't, I couldn't do it, and so I was trying and trying and trying, and it took me forever to find, like, um, like, like non-sexualized like older women characters who were who were like a, who i was able to identify with and be like oh yeah this is like a hero because there's so many there's so fucking many for me for like for like men like there are so many like male heroes who are just like they're very masculine or they might be even different they might be like not traditionally masculine but they're still nonetheless a hero there's just so many varieties and there's like it's never represented for women and it's just absolutely wild because it, it does a number on you it does a number mm -hmm. to not be able to go like oh yeah who's this character that i feel really represents me that i can use as like a symbol it took me forever to to get over that and it's like a weird thing that i encountered you know during my the process of my transition of just like well who, who am mm -hmm. i supposed to fucking look to you know what i mean i have like people my peers and stuff like that but who am i supposed to look up to you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there anyone, anything anyone else to add, add to this? No, okay. it's based central. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. Um, Aww, so, thank you. Uh, Hopefully, I'll uh, we'll uh, transition to our walk on panel after this. So, everyone, the stream is not ending. The stream is not ending. Oh, God, the stream is not ending. So, uh, the stream is not <laughs> ending here either. Leave. Don't go uh, away. We got a lot of stuff to talk I about. To, um, I guess I give an outro to um, uh, my uh, amazing panelists and hosts here in chat. I will start with uh, Tumble. Don't Tumble, you do it, Cyborg. Uh, thanks for uh, being a part uh, of this. Again, we're, we're really happy uh, to hear from you and hear your, uh, your perspective. Um, tell everyone about yourself. Um, yeah, I'm Tumble or Maya. I have no preference which. Um, I stream politics at, I don't have a schedule. I'm sorry, it's really bad. Normally like 1 a.m. here, which is what, 7 p.m. Eastern? I don't know, but it varies. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for having me. It was, I, I, I love this panel. It's, it's um, strange serenity in Twitch politics. It's okay, Cottagecore. Go get some rest. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, we were... 
yeah, we're trying to uh, create something um, uh, different here. And I, I'm really hoping that you all are enjoying this. Um, 100%. But yeah, thank you for being here, Tumble Dryer Maya. Um, uh, it was really, really uh, great uh, seeing you. I hope we have you back again in the future. Thanks so much. Uh, next, Demon Mama. Hey, hi, Demon Mama. Hey. Um, Demon Mama, one of my favorites, uh, actually. Uh, Demon Mama is coming here. I love the uh, passion which you uh, are bringing to all these conversations and the, the knowledge. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks for coming through once again. Um, everyone, Demon Mama makes fantastic content. You should really uh, check her out. Um, and she'll uh, argue with assholes in chat, like, all the time. I mean, she's a woman after my own heart. Um, so, thank you. <laughs> yeah, everyone, if you uh, want to argue about your dumb point um, that you think is brilliant, uh, go over to Demon Mama. Uh, she'll <laughs> shake you out. Um, so, <laughs> uh, Demon Mama, tell the world about yourself. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for having me on here. Um, I This has just been such a wonderful conversation. It, again, I'm sure I'm echoing sentiment here, but... It is a breath of fresh air. It's a really wonderful um, opportunity to come on and just talk with other women and them presenting people in this space. It's just amazing. So, um, yeah, if you thought I had some interesting stuff to say, consider uh, following me on YouTube and on Twitch and on my website, demonmama.com. That's where you can find everything. Um, would love to have you. Uh, we have a nice cozy chat on the website. I'm going to be doing stuff after this panel. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on more things, I'm going to be doing Q&A, maybe even some debates. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So um, come on by and we'll be, we'd, love, we'd, we'd love to have you. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm. Uh, okay. Next is Denims. Denims. Uh, thank you for we coming are through. True. Uh, Denims is uh, exploding us. over at her own channel. Um, which uh, she does a completely different uh, uh, time period. Let's so uh, check her out. Pop, like when course. you're not watching me, you should be watching Denims. Like there's no other choice here, right? Um, Denims is streaming in the morning, um, and uh, everything I see, but also she's I love Pepe mods. absolute epic, epic streamer. And I'm thankful that she takes some time out of her day. Um, she's a very busy woman to come and uh, join us. Thank you for being here, Denims. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I'm a Denims political streamer based. on Twitch. I mostly just react andy to whatever chat wants me to and then i angrily rant about how these are these things are good or bad um i had like a lot of fun because like um i haven't i i like i think that there's something very special about having like a friend group that is female like i don't know if any anyone here has had like a group chat with a bunch of other women yep it's, <laughs> many it's times. wholesome and like it's this so is the wholesome. closest i've gotten to that in, like i think like a solid like year or two so i had like a, like actually i had like a lot of fun i'm pretty tired i have like an exam tomorrow but i like could i literally couldn't say like i want to leave like i was like no i want to stay i want to talk <laughs> to all these like these great chicks oh my god i love them so much oh so i actually god. had like a lot of fun thank you so much for having me absolutely um next so uh we have uh joe the silly serious joe my friend who i love very much uh who comes through uh she is an extremely knowledgeable knowledgeable woman as you've seen yourself um and uh she uh makes amazing points she enlightens me i True, learned Jessica. stuff from her like every time that she comes on uh panel i i learned something so i'm always very very excited to see her Joe's but also awesome. you know she's my friend and uh, i just like hanging out with her so i take I uh, cherish every single one of those opportunities, Joe. Shit. I know you're so busy, uh, but you came on here anyway. Thank you so much for being here, my friend. Um, everyone, check hey. out Joe, the silly serious. Uh, she was streaming yesterday, which is a rarity, I stream right? Sometimes <laughs> I am a Zaylik streamer, very not consistent. But when I do stream, I tend to stream on political philosophy and moral philosophy, and I like to mix in pop culture to help you understand why philosophy. That's means awesome. anything um so i've done who did i do recently john rawls and i did martha nussbaum yesterday and we'll i'll probably have to go back to her because she does a lot um but i will be looking at hannah arendt soon um and then sometimes i just get on and chill so and you can like ask me questions and i will probably not answer them i'll just no, i will i will um yeah uh but i how do you end these how do you stop yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're so awkward with this. I have no idea why this is so tough for you. <laughs> you could just like uh, I think maybe this trail off, off like that, off I, I, uh, like that. That's perfect, actually. Um, okay. but, <laughs> yeah, let me post uh, uh, yes, on, go on watch uh, Joe's stream. 
uh, she uh, talks about very interesting people, and the next time someone mentions them offhandedly, like she just did, you can actually know who the fuck she's talking about. Um, that'll be amazing. That see to be upping your intelligence game just by listening to her. So everyone, please, please, please check her out. The link is in chat, um, and you won't regret it. Uh, next we have City Cat. City Cat, thank you for being here. Thank you for helping me host this thing. Uh, thank you for being uh, so much fun. Uh, to hang out with us. Thank you sir, for being so passionate about these issues, right? Um, came up with that topic, the first topic, and yeah, you just, it was amazing. Everyone loved it. Um, but that's what uh, I, I like about these panels, you know, especially um, when you get these ideas from women um, that I might not be able to come up with myself. Um, it makes this the stream better, and you, you did that like you always do. Uh, thank you, City Cat, uh, my friend. We love for being City here. Cat. City so Cat, much. tell the world about yourself. Yeah, so I'm amazing. a leftist anime cat girl based epic <laughs> cool adorable person. Dog. And uh you should follow me on Twitter. Um I I don't stream as uh much as I want to. Um but I'm the city cat on all platforms. I post adorable cat cat girl content on Twitter and I will tweet if I and poggers, I'm poggers as well. Um, and I will tweet if I go live. Um, so I will, uh, I, I, I'm, I will do that, and I will stream more often. But um, it, I, and follow me. Get yourself Twitch some well, water real quick. Like. Go, Amrit. The more numbers water. I have in like the box that says followers, Look, I'm water. the more serotonin my brain can produce. <laughs> so it's, uh, get the dang it's, water. it's very important you that live. you do that. Um, I gave you one more yeah. serotonin. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, yeah, no, I hit 500 followers on Twitch recently, which was like dope. Um, yeah, I, I'm i really cute and I have really base takes. And I often like post photos of me uh, being a cat girl and then I'm like, healthcare is a human right. And then people argue with me and I'm like, you're arguing with a cat girl. Look at the photos. You're, you're stupid for even arguing with me. I owned you by looking like this. And uh, it's great. So uh, follow me. Uh, <laughs> True. And yes, uh, like Dedham's uh, uh, said a little while ago, you know, like you are the only uh, woman that I know who act actively describes herself as adorable on this platform. Like no one else just like says it. You know, what I mean, like stating the obvious, obviously, but the, uh, no one does that. Uh, um, and I, I think it's great that you just you know you just took that for yourself. There you go, yeah. Um, See? Follow yeah, City I'm Cat. I'm Follow City Cat. The truth. Like... Indeed. Uh, okay. Um, last, but absolutely not least, we have Trick Switch. Trick Switch, who is the most fun, adorable, um, uh, cute, cunning, um, witty, um, all those good things. That's what she is. She is to me. Uh, Trix is my friend. I've missed her so much. Oh my god, I've missed her so much. Um, and I'm so glad that she's back. Uh, with us, even just for a little bit. Uh, Trix, Born. how are you doing? Tell the world about yourself. Uh, hey, I don't really stream much. Uh, mm. I'm, I might start getting more into it now that I'm kind of calmed down with assessment. But I do have a Twitter where I say pretty dumb shit at like 3 in the morning, and then Kat messages me, stop tweeting, go to bed. <laughs> and I'm like, will do. Uh, I've been wanting to share this the whole time. I got a lamp that's a piranha plant, and it's really cool. <laughs> Trix, stop marvelous. buying stuff. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> anyway, it's like the best thing I own. It's got a little mount. Follow me if you want. Like, I'm not here to tell you what to do, buddy. <laughs> he is the most perfect human oh, no, being. Chat. I love it so much. Can you push me by F that? Chat. Listen, um, chat will be back. Don't anyway. worry. Don't worry. Chat will be back. <laughs> okay. All right. So Dream's ending. It's a temporary yeah. Yeah, outage. Dream right. is anyway. ending uh, right no, now. Dream is over. 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 I'll just say something real quick. Um, uh, so we're going to move on to our walk around It was too um, Anyone in here uh, who would like to join us, so do back, so. Um, if not, that's okay. Thank you for spending uh, your time, your effort, your knowledge here. And I have to say that, like, you know, um, people kept telling me, you know, how much they enjoyed this uh, stream, um, how much they liked this experience. I can't do this myself. I can't offer these perspectives. Like, I've never lived these lives, right? Um, and, and, and so back. I, back. I need people uh, like the Mrs. Kind Women um, to come on and to uh, share their perspectives. I need you, the you in the audience, right? If you have an interesting perspective and you'd like to share, uh, come on in. Um, back in because action. I, I can't Is do this back? by it's myself. 
Um, I, I can't literally pay people to, to come on and talk about these things. Uh, nice people like you, interesting people like you have to come on and, and share. And we can have these amazing experiences, but that, it's all up to you. So thank you all for being here. And uh, yeah, we're moving on. Have a good one, everyone. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, stream over. Now oh, he's alive. Go, go, ahead. Home, go home, go home, go home. Go home. <laughs> he left. Coward. So good. Listen, so good. All right.